If I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world, and that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. The awakening world. We come from the same source of powerful love force. We come together, together, calling our invited. We come from the same source of powerful love force. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Awakening World. It's been four full years, and we are now in our fifth year of Global Peace Drive shows. And um, tonight is our special anniversary celebration. And I invited all the major co-hosts that have collaborated with us. And so it's going to be an amazing show with some really wonderful people. And of course, our first person that I'm going to pop the spotlight on, I'm going to show you all the people that are with us, is the co-founder of Global Peace Tribe, Deborah Juicy, who um, I co-created Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe with. So we've got Deborah with us. And Hello, also, <laughs> welcome. Hello, everyone. <laughs> welcome. Um, uh, I'm going to bring everybody on board first, then we're going to go back to you, Deborah, and, and, and chat mm -hmm. a little bit. The person that I also did along, of course, the most co-hosting I've done has been with Deborah, but also I did a lot of shows with Trish Wright. We did, first we called it Straight Talk, and then we called it different things at different times. Um, but we worked together for three years, and I am so grateful. Thank you, Trish, for dropping in. And I know our audience is going to look forward to hearing about what you are up to. Um, <laughs> so thank you. And then someone that I co-host with once a month now. Uh, Tangila from Soul Search is with us tonight, and um, I'm really enjoying our regular collaborations. Thank you so much. Thank you, Scott. It's always amazing to be here with you and the whole Global Peace Tribe. Love you guys so much. Yeah, we love you. Um, and Eden Amadora, who is uh, now also somebody that I've been co-hosting with for three years, does a lot of the shows with us, um, so she's quite wonderful. Um, Omar Shar is in England. Obviously, he is the person who has been my main guy. Um, and he's in England taking care of his mom, but we're going to hear uh, a video that he created. We're going to hear from him a little bit later on the show. Um, uh, I do want to acknowledge, though, we are going to have live music with Johanna Beekman. Uh, Johanna, welcome. And Johanna just played live in Ashland at the Haven last night. I feel badly I wasn't there. And one of her comrades who's been, goes all the way back, Larissa Stowe. And when we play the Saturday Night Alive trailer, our original theme song for Saturday Night Alive, Saturday Night Alive was of course Larissa's amazing song. Um, and so it's perfect to have you with us, Larissa. And honored to be here, so honored. It feels so good to be a part of this really beautiful community and all these beautiful people, you know, that just keep coming back. It's amazing. Uh, absolutely. And, and we look forward to hearing all about the Weevolution and the Six Global Agreements. And then also wanted to bring back uh, two main people that really helped make Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Drive happen, Jan Kaplan and Jay Mayer. Um, and uh, so 
we've invited Jay and Jan, and we're going to take a look at a couple of their videos. They always provided wonderful videos and wonderful support for us. So here we are. These are our guests for the evening. We also, there's only room for nine, but I'm going to um, go ahead and bring up Sylvie. Uh, this is Sylvie, who we're going to hear from a little bit later on in the show, and she has put together a beautiful nature summit. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, uh, we're looking forward to hearing from that. Um, and we also have a beautiful video. I did an interview with Marianne Williamson yesterday, and she shares her vision for an awakening world. And so as we hear her vision, uh, we want to hear all of your vision. So we're going to hear from our co-hosts, their visions for an awakening world. Um, and so that's what we've got planned for tonight. We've got some fun surprises as well. But it all began... Uh, four years ago. Now, what's interesting in how life works out, it all started when four years ago, we were going to do a fundraising event for our good friend Fantuzzi at Deborah's home in Sebastopol. And uh, then this <laughs> thing called the pandemic happened. And Deborah said, Scott, we've got to make it an online event. And um, uh, so we did. And people said, wow, that's kind of cool. We've got nothing else to do on Saturday night. Can you do it for another few weeks during this pandemic? Because we all thought the pandemic was going to last a month, maybe two months. Here we are four years later, still doing shows on Saturday night. But the great irony is I scheduled this about two months ago. Deborah and I were talking, working on our calendars, which said April 13th would be our anniversary show. Unbeknownst to me, Fantuzzi arranged to do a party at our good friend Katrina Valencourt's house tonight. So I'm coming to you from a Fantuzzi concert happening downstairs. Fantuzzi will come in and say hello at some point during the show. And then at the end of the main body of the show, I'm going to live stream his concert out to you. So it's it's totally full circle, Deborah. Yes. And it was so beautiful because um, we had known each other for 30 years in, in community, um, but hadn't really worked together. But at that time, we both got the message. We both got the mission. This is what we need to do now for our community. And we found out our community was not just our Northern California that we knew, but it was global. So we really reached out to thousands and thousands of people all over the world. That was so beautiful and gave them a lifeline during this time when people didn't know what was going on, but bringing together the community from all over and really honoring that it was a birth canal that we we're going through and we're still connected and we're still on mission for the evolutionary purpose of the planet and we're all connected in love. And that was always the basis of our programs. And what I love too, Scott, is that uh, we went to a lot of the big speakers, Deepak Chopra, Marianne Williamson, Greg Braden, and I, I knew all of them because I go to all the festivals and conferences and ask them if they could be there. And everyone was, yes, we want to help. We want to do something. So this show skyrocketed to a whole other level. And we also reached out to community and everyone was, yes, let's do this. And this really shows what we can do in the world when we come together and we all on mission and we all collaborate at high levels. And we were getting 50,000 people from all over the world watching Saturday Night Alive every week. So it just became a beautiful phenomenon. And um, I've gone on as an, and Scott, I honor you so much for keeping the flame alive and doing this every single week and continuing to bring the incredible people that we had every week that came on every week. We did 90 shows of Saturday Night Alive. And then of course, Scott continued on the Awakening World. And um, what I wanna say is I went on to kind of go back into my mission of networking around the world. And I wanna say that we are still awakening, even though the world looks like it's disintegrating and all the stuff is coming up, all the dysfunction is in our face. We're really in this purification process and there's more people awake now than ever before. And more truth is coming out than ever before of all, lots of things that have been hidden in, in corruption, in the economy, um, even UFOs, in um, 
healing technology is now out on the forefront. So there's so much is now alive. So as much bad as we see in the world, there is as much good. And we're behind that. And we're all on mission moving it forward. So I'm still really excited. I'm going to all the conferences and festivals because they're all coming back now. And that's kind of my lineage of producing the Harmony Festival for 33 years and networking our incredible community as we all continue to come in our missions and connect and collaborate at high levels. So I, I love what you're continuing to do here, Scott. As you know, we meet every week still and I support this as much as I can. And I love all the hosts and all the speakers and it's just a beautiful thing. So um, I'm still really on board as a mama to help this and everything we can, can you know, whatever spirit tells us is our next assignment, you know, we're on it, all of us here as a global peace tribe. Beautiful. So. Well, I thought it'd be fun to play the trailer, um, the kind of promotional trailer we created a few years ago. So let's take a little, a little ride back into okay. this three, right. it's three minute video, which, uh, well, or two minutes and 17 seconds that will bring back some memories. Which hopefully we'll play. Oh, you know, this does this sometimes. Um, so if I open it a second time, it should play this time. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Why is that? So I am going to try a different way. Share sound, advanced. You know, this is a reminder of how we have just continued to learn how to work with um, with uh, Zoom. And anyway, hopefully now it's going to play. Um, like I've been having a problem with it where sometimes I've got it queued up, it plays before the show begins, but then once I'm on Zoom, it's being ornery. Um, so I have to find it because I'm using the advanced settings. Here we go. What have been your favorite forms of entertainment and connection with others? Were most of them shut down by the pandemic? It sure has been a tough time. Out of the dark of an unprecedented year, an incredible online community was birthed. It's Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe. Ready for community inspiration and magical moments online? Since April 2020, this dynamic show has touched the lives of people all around the world. Join prominent luminaries, musicians, magicians, and comedians. This is your chance to relax and enjoy uplifting entertainment and inspirational messages from the comfort of home. Together, we are creating a new paradigm. Saturday Night Alive showcases internationally acclaimed speakers, best-selling authors, and wisdom keepers. Let them illuminate your path with tips, tools, and insights. It also sheds light on many timely topics. Discover how to master your relationships. Dive into the secrets behind ancient history. Receive deep wisdom from indigenous elders and much more. Dance along to live performances with high vibe musicians and hear what these brilliant performers have to say. Experience major artists from the Conscious Festival circuit and beyond. You'll be dazzled by our conscious comedy, magnificent magic, and spoken word. The show is meeting our needs during these critical times. Saturday Night Alive delivers inspirational wisdom, community connection, and positive vibes. Join us every Saturday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, or catch the replays. Register for Zoom Room access. Enjoy live chats and a pre-show experience with presenters and the Global Peace Tribe. Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe. Find out more and register now at globalpeacetribe.com. I've added Larissa to uh, the uh, conversation because that's her singing that song, which was <laughs> the, the Saturday Night Alive uh, theme song. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, it brings back memories, doesn't it? It does. It's. I just. 
I can't tell you how honored I am to have that, to be a part of that and hear that song of peace that for me, like was, it was so important to me and to be able to share that with the world and, and to see that helping to lift up the message, it's just like, it just it make, almost brings tears to my eyes, to be honest with you. So thank you. Just deeply honored to be a part of this circle, this sacred circle. To you two <laughs> making things happen in this world, you know, your love and your vision, so important. And it's you all know, of us. Watching that trailer, you know, it's... it reminds me like, God, I've got to get some of those people back on the show. You know, it's like, oh, that's right. There's that person and that person and that person. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, Chief Phil was on our show last week, you know. So, um, Deborah, you started to say something. Yeah, it really is a high level collaboration because everyone hears the call and they step up with whatever their gift is and what they're here. And that's what creates the magic is we all work together with so much generosity and love and abundance. And that's the new world we're creating. This is why we're here. This is why we're going forward. So more and more of this at next, next levels is what I see. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> that was one of the great things that really happened during the pandemic is how everybody did, at least in our tribe, in our world, like Deborah said, everybody we asked came in. There was just like this beautiful spirit of collaboration. And the collaboration continues um, because just right at coming up this Thursday, uh, April 18th, Deborah is producing a live event in Sebastopol which we hope anybody in Northern California will come to live. But for those who can't make it, we're going to live stream it out. Um, and it's going to go out to our Global Peace Tribe family as well. <laughs> and it's featuring two people that I met through Deborah, the twin Ray, um, who I've become very dear friends with and have been on this show probably 20 times. I know a lot of uh, twin Ray community people are watching right now. Deborah, tell us a little bit about what's happening on Thursday night. Yeah, Scott and I both feel that the Twin Ray are one of the highest teachers really on the planet. They are amazing. And I, as a lot of you know, I, I teach about the Ascension and they are truly Ascension teachers that walk their talk. And so I asked them, what could they share that would be so <clears> profound <throat> and so important for now? So we're doing a presentation on Beyond Prophecy. So they're going back into ancient prophecy that shares what's happening right now, all this craziness, all this evolution into the next level, and they're going into future prophecies. So they're really gonna address what the what is happening now and what do we do about it and where we're going into the golden age. So it's gonna be a beautiful two hour transmission. So just a good bite size of, of the twin ray and kind of what's really current and present now. So um, you can sign up at SovereignSuperSisters.com or if you're part of the Global Peace Tribe, as usual, it's gonna be broadcast to all of you. So that's great. And I'd love to share a few more things that I'm doing, Scott. Okay. Um, so I'm not working with Scott anymore, but continued on in my mission. And I go to a lot of conferences and events and that's where I network with people. It's a lineage of my Harmony Festival. Right now I'm at the Alchemy event in Los Angeles, and there's still one more day, and it's a high-level spiritual metaphysical event. So if you're in Los Angeles and you want to come to the Alchemy event, mm -hmm. I'll put the link in the chat room, but it's alchemyevent.com, and mention Deborah, and they'll give you a super, super discounted ticket for the last day. And then I have my uh, Wishing Well portal that shares about all the festivals and the conferences that are coming back, as well as online portal, as well as online programs. And that's wishingwellportal.com. But I've also got into another um, new paradigm business, which is basically what I do, is sharing scalar wave healing technology through the EE system. This is new technology that's here now to help heal us in so many ways that uh, we're becoming ill from the toxins, the pollutions, the um, autoimmune diseases and all that. And I have a center in Sebastopol, but through, um, we're gonna be broadcasting it online, the founder, Dr. Sandra Rose Michael. So watch for that, that's gonna happen June 9th. So I'm continuing to sit on the cutting edge and bring through what is next because that's what we're all looking for is how we're going to continue to birth this new earth, earth now, not be brought down for as everything, all that is dysfunction in the world tends to crumble and crash and the new world comes up. 
because that's what we're here for us to work together and support each other and build this new earth now. And I'll put everything in the chat room. Beautiful. Deborah, thank you. Love you, Scott. What continue to do, you know, for some of us go way back to when she did the Harmony Festival for 33 years, which was mm -hmm. our everybody's favorite festival. Um, and uh, look forward to seeing what collaborations we get to do next. And I'll see you on Thursday night. Okay. Love you all, everyone. Thanks, Deborah. Well, it's always been about combining music with wonderful presenters. And uh, someone that I met again through so Saturday Night Alive was Johanna Beekman. Um, she became one of our most popular musical artists, but then she and I now uh, also co-host. And she's been a wonderful co-host. We've done a few shows together. Um, and uh, But tonight she is our live musical artist. Um, welcome, Johanna. Hi, Scott. It's great to be here. Can you hear me okay? For some reason, yeah. I, I sound quieter to me here. You sound good. You sound good. Wonderful. I just turned my end down. This will help if I can hear. Awesome. So, now, be so before good you play a song, here. before you play a song, what are you, what's your memory from that time? Is there anything that stands out from you for you? Yeah, it was a, a really intense time. And uh, I just remember I was actually on tour in Los Angeles when the pandemic hit and I was alone in a cabin for a whole month uh, near Los Angeles. And uh, I started this international music video thing and it got really huge and everyone said yes, Krishna Das and the original t-shirt in India, that's Mantra Sangha Health and Healing kind of got birthed there. So I started doing my own thing. And then we met really soon after that, right when I got home and figured out, okay, I got to set up my studio different. I got to be able to do all of this lighting, sound, and, you know, it changed because I've been touring, you know, it's a different world. And it was just a really great opportunity when we started to connect because I just created the video world and, uh, and was really enjoying using a different side of my artistic brain to to work in these realms and you were doing the same thing, bringing people together. And I just have so many incredible memories of Deborah when you were on there and Scott, we had all of those really big names right at the beginning. And, you know, I had been at a few conferences with a few of them, but thanks Deborah for all of your connections. I mean, it just all, it takes all of us to, I call it pollinator, like is what I call myself. I think you're the master, Jay Ma, the master pollinator of the of the bunch. And so thank you for your selfless service and years of devotion to this community. And you just paved the way for the next generation, which I seem to be in. So thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, everyone in here who's contributed and created this beautiful community that we all really relied on during one of the most hard times in my life. And I think we could all probably raise our hands and say that it was also difficult. So, um, but it was also the most heartening time because we all got to connect in a different way wherever we were, you know, the tech revolution has brought some blessings that Scott, you have run with. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Every Saturday night for four years, dang, that's a lot of, of life that you've dedicated to this. Um, I'm putting into the chat box your mantra sangha um, uh, video. Um, I had actually thought of playing it tonight, but since we get to have you live, we're not going to do that. But everybody, this is one of the great videos that I've seen. It's her mantra sangha video. I don't know how she did it. She has people from all over the world, Krishna Das, playing music, um, dancing. It's an incredible very inspirational video. So for those of you in the Zoom room, I'm putting the link into the chat box. Um, you can also find it on her website, which we'll take a look at after her song. But what song do you have for us tonight, Johanna? Well, this is one that will be released. Oh, we can't hear you. Oh, what happened? Not at all? Something happened. You're very, almost like the mic is out. Oh, no. Hello. Sorry. Hello. Aha. Oh, uh -huh. There we are. Yay. I just unplugged it a little. That doesn't work as well. Um, awesome. So this is a song that I have yet to release, but I'm sure I played it on your on your show before. But when we were talking about Deborah as the Ma, I was thinking of all the divine mothers in the Hinduism tradition. And there's this song that we can all sing one chorus together. That's just Ma, Ma, Ma. And then I'll sing about kind of the next generation. This is about 
how the children are paving the way for the new world and we are here to help them usher and listen rather than create ourselves. So. All right. And remember everybody to move and groove to the music because you know All I'll right. be spotlighting people dancing. This is called In Unity. Ma, ma, ma. Yes, we've got to have faith and love and synchronicity. We've got to breathe in love and exhale all the greed. We've got to stand in light, ignite the dark. We've got to fight for love, illuminate our hearts, sing ma, ma. show just a second <laughs> so I stop and breathe I stop and breathe I stop and breathe just stop sisters and brothers a change is gonna come a change is gonna come daughters and mothers a change is gonna come a change is gonna come Children empowered, a change is gonna come, a change is gonna come. Balance of power, a change is gonna come, a change is gonna come, a change is gonna come, a change is gonna come. Sing ma, ma, ma. So I'll give her a good global peace tribe twinkle. And let's give a little twinkle to Chad on the drums. Thank you, Chad. I so appreciate Chad. Well, gotten to know when you've come to Ashland and all the support he provides. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, and I wanted to just pop in and just say, I have been on the road touring my butt off again, singing at all the yoga festivals, singing my Dharma path. And I have, I had one moment that I wanted to share here in this community because I was in my friend Sienna Sherman's class. And for, for this time, I got to actually practice and be in the audience because I'd been working so hard. And I usually play for her and I got to be there and someone hurt themselves next to me. And I'm that person who's like, okay, I'm going to go get ice. And I kind of produce as well when I'm at a festival. And this woman just kind of froze when I went to get her ice. And she's like, I'm sorry, what's your name? And I'm like, I'm Johanna Beekman. She's like, what? I've been watching you on Global Peace Tribe for years. Um, her name was Janet, I think. <laughs> and uh, it was in Sedona um, last month. And it was just the sweetest moment. And it just really reminded me how many ripples that have been created by this movement and how many lives have been touched. So thank you, Scott, for that. It's really, really beautiful that we can all serve each other and recognize each other and see each other in a different way. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to hear more from Johanna, but I do want to remind everybody that you can uh, find all things Johanna at her website, which is johannasings.com. There's a lot there. Um, you can, of course, get her music. Um, Bandcamp is usually the best way, I think. Spotify. There, again, is the Mantra Sangha um, uh, video that I talked about. It is so beautiful. I tell you, if we had time, I would play it tonight. It is so gorgeous. Um, Heartbeat Swan, you know, there's an interesting thing, Johanna, when you played in Ashland in the fall at the uh, satsang, we recorded it, of course, and uh, there was a prayer that Sanandaji led, and you played that song kind of in the middle of the prayer, it weaves in, well, that prayer, we play it every day for the last four months, so the entire Twin Ray community hears that one heart song every day during uh, Sanandaji's prayer. So it's amazing how these things carry on. Uh, we can't hear you, you're muted. I am not muted, what is happening? <laughs> but oh, now, we, now you can hear me, what now we can wonderful. Hear you. We like uh, I was you. just saying, I think you have inspired us to shift our uh, direction and play Heartbeats One for our second song, potentially. Thank you so that much. That would be this. awesome, that would be great. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And all the Twinway people would love that too. Oh, Enjoy yeah, that. that would be beautiful. All right, I look forward to it. Well, you know, as uh, Deborah was saying, we had the experience of different people uh, being available. And it was really amazing, all the people that we were able to find to get onto um, our show. Mm -hmm. And uh, and one of the people that has continued to be a big part of our show is Marianne Williamson. Um, and I did an interview with her yesterday. Um, and I'm going to check and make sure that the video is queued up and will play because these videos have been a little bit ornery. Um, most of you know that she is actually still running for president. Now, an interesting thing happened. Um, of course, she ran four years ago, and then she ran again this year. And um, uh, in late January, uh, one of her key people that I, I work closely with let me know that she was getting ready to quit the race and that she was feeling pretty discouraged. And so um, we decided we wanted to really honor her and we had arranged to do an evening with Marianne Williamson on Sunday, February 4th, whatever it was, two months ago, knowing that it was that she was probably going to wind down and, and quit the race. So I arranged for Andrew Harvey, Michael Beckwith, and uh, Catherine Woodward Thomas to all provide beautiful videos acknowledging her. And um, she didn't know that we were to do that. She came on to do the show. She was exhausted, depleted. And when she saw these videos and our Global Peace Tribe loving her up, she just broke open beautifully and shared what it's been like running for president and how hard it's been. The, you know, the fight with her and her own Democratic Party. She's running as a Democratic nominee. And um, she shared very deeply. It was very profound. Um, and she did indeed, a couple of days later, she left the race. But somehow she got invigorated and came back into the race and is powering in. And um, I did an interview with her yesterday. Every year she does a, 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 a something for our anniversary show. She's done it four years in a row now. 
And um, you'll see, for those of you who saw her on February 4th, she looks quite different. It's like she's just got in a beautiful, a beautiful wave of inspiration. And so this is my interview uh, conversation, really, with uh, Marianne from yesterday. And then I really want to hear from our co-hosts. I want to hear from Rev Deb and Trish and uh, Eden and Larissa, uh, their vision for an awakening world or what uh, Marianne has inspired within you. So, um, and I certainly want to hear from everybody in the audience. So please fill up the chat box with your thoughts. And here we go with uh, Marianne Williamson. <laughs> we are delighted to have Marianne Williamson with us on this special anniversary show. Uh, she's been with us every anniversary. She's one of the very first uh, celebrity people we had on Saturday night for the Peace Tribe, Saturday Night Live. And she's, of course, been running for president. We had an amazing uh, program with her earlier. And Marianne, thank you for being with us. And I'd love to get your vision that we can all hold for what an awakening world truly will look like. First of all, I want to thank you for everything you've done for us. Congratulate you and all the people who work with you uh, on your anniversary. Uh, you know, in A Course in Miracles, it says an idea grows stronger when it's shared. And you've been a major soloist in this symphonic uh, resonance going on and going back now for, for years, really articulating and holding the space for a conversation uh, that is new and better. Um, I, I quote uh, Werner Erhard often when he said, you can live your life one of two ways. You can live your life out of circumstances or you can live your life out of a vision. And really that's everything we've been talking about. So many of us, obviously you, uh, what's our vision of what you just uh, called an awakened world? Uh, from a metaphysical spiritual perspective, to be awake is to be aware of who you are, really, what's your actual identity and why are you on this earth? Living on this planet, it's a training in forgetting who we are. Mm -hmm. It's a training in thinking that we are bodies and that we are separate from each other. And enlightenment is unlearning that false worldview to realize the level, the ultimately real level on which there's no place where you stop and I start, where we're not separate from each other, where we come from the mind of love and we are here to extend that love. So I think that so many people, um, not just in our country and uh, around the world, uh, probably less in our country to some extent than many places in the world, are feeling this evolutionary impulse to awaken from the sleep of that forgetfulness. The reason I ran for president was because it's not enough for us to just awaken individually because there's collective karma. A collective can reap uh, results and consequences just like an individual can. So an awakened world to me is number one, a planet in which there is no more war war has become a mere memory and the way we use vision to get there for instance is that we all need to imagine use the power of our imaginative capacity to imagine a planet in which there is no war and then re uh, reverse engineer from there we can't just keep fighting wars you know franklin roosevelt said we need to do more than end war we need to end the beginnings of all wars. So whether you're talking about Ukraine, whether you're talking about, uh, uh, about uh, Israel and Palestine, there are so many places where what could have been done decades ago that would have made a different outcome uh, possible and even probable. So an aware, there are two things to me about an awakened world. One, the vision of the world where there is no unnecessary suffering uh, we have 12,000 children on this planet who starve every day, but there's no dearth of food. The problem is not a dearth of food. It's the fact that we are at a state in the consciousness of humanity where we are willing to even tolerate a starving child, mm -hmm. right? So to me, when I think of an awakened world, I think of a world where there is no unnecessary suffering, where we've repaired the earth, we've repaired the skies, we've repaired the waters, we've repaired the earth, we've formed uh, peace, 
community, all those things that we know and the love that is possible. But also I think it's important that as Gandhi said, the end is inherent in the means. And that means that until we ourselves become awake, we cannot be channels for the awakened world. So I think all of us see that, see that um, uh, challenge within ourselves, not just how they should be more awake, but how we ourselves need to be more awake. Where are the places where we are choosing fear over love, judgment over blessing, um, victimization over genuine triumph uh, through more uh, pure and loving thoughts. So that's that's the name of the game right now, as I see it. And I think so many of us are are joined in that, don't you? Absolutely. Um, and as you've been out traveling the country running for president, what have you seen? I know you've seen some very hard things. You've experienced some things that make us all angry. Is there anything you've seen that's given you extra hope or extra inspiration? <clears throat> How wonderful people are. Mm -hmm. Scott, when I actually, and when people sometimes say, well, who are your supporters? I see people who have, I say, people who've actually heard me. Yeah. Because what I, I see, you know, I'm, I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico right now. Uh, the famous uh, jazz musician Stanley uh, uh, Jordan is even going to be there opening tonight. Uh, what a support that is, as well as tomorrow night in Albuquerque. Um, what I see are people who I believe are the vast majority of Americans who are decent, mm -hmm. intelligent, noble when called to be, and concerned about this country. You know, I love history. There's a lot to inspire us to believe that the kind of repair and course correction that we need to do now is possible. If abolitionists could pull it off and women suffragists could pull it off and the original labor organizers could pull it off and the civil rights movement could pull it off, surely they were facing systems that were cruel, unjust, and locked up, but they unlocked them. And so what I see that gives me hope is just the people I meet at my talks and who come up to me, not at my talks, but tell me that they... Uh, love my work or love the campaign. Um, and of course, that's why there was such uh, such an effort to suppress it, but that's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but for, for the, you know, for the purposes of a conversation where we need to hold the vision, it's okay and life will do what it does. But uh, when I'm actually out there talking to people and I, 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 I'll be in a whole room of people, 100, 200, 300, nobody's looking at their phone. Mm. Everybody's really listening. Everybody is listening, not just to me, but to other people when they speak. I think we crave, Americans crave meaning right now. There's so much ultimately unimportant, shallow stimulus that just assaults us day in and day out. And often it's even coming from supposedly news sources. So it's almost hard to know where do I look for meaning? Now, people like yourself, when it comes to the individual transformation, there are a lot of places to look for meaning right now. But when it comes to the collective, mm -hmm. I think we all want that because we know, you know, 9-11, when 9-11 occurred, a woman who I knew, a friend of mine, was on uh, one of the planes. She was going from Boston to Los Angeles that morning. Because her son was in a rock and roll band and she was going to hear him. And if you had said to me, Marianne, name five people who you have known in your life, who, if you were told, we want the world to know what Americans are like, give me a person who you would want the world to say, see, this is a woman who she saw a television show about hurt animals she would cry for a day you know i mean the most sensitive the most loving but she happened to be on that plane so none of us can wall ourselves off from the collective issues that are driving the world today i've been saying for so long good luck thinking you can just drink all that green juice and that'll fix it because you know, <laughs> there's so much poisons in the air so many poisons in the ground so many poisons you know at this point, it can't just be about me transforming. It's got to be about us transforming. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, thank you so much for all that you have shared and that you are shining the light on truth. And it's very frustrating to, I think, our tribe, how the Democratic Party has shoehorned Biden back in, just like they shoehorned Hillary in eight years ago. And look at what that led to. Um, instead of Bernie having a real shot and and you haven't been given a real shot and it, it breaks our hearts and we just want you to know you are our candidate you are who represent our values and what we believe in thank you thank you so much and in the states listen I'm still on uh the ballots in quite a few states Wyoming and uh, New Mexico and Oregon and Guam and Virgin Islands and Idaho and uh, Puerto Rico. So I'm in, a, in Maryland where I'll be, uh, you know, I'll be in New Mexico in a few days. I'll be in Oregon. Uh, then in Maryland, we'll make it to Puerto Rico. So please, I hope everybody understands in a state where I'm on your ballot. I mean, I, you can still vote for me. Joe Biden does not need your vote. Joe <laughs> Biden already has the, the delegates. But the more votes we get, we've already gotten over 400,000 votes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, oh. which means nothing in terms of getting the nomination. But if you have a close election in November, those are the kinds of numbers that do. So with every, first of all, I think everybody should be able to vote the option that represents the agenda they'd want to see for the country. So if anybody does, I'm sure there are people watching for whom, you know, I'm not their candidate and that's democracy and not, we, we respect that. But for those who do align, uh, please know that every vote matters because the more votes we get, the more eyebrows we raise. Yeah. You know? Well, and and look at, you know, Biden won Georgia by 12,000 votes. Um, the entire election in 2001, Florida was 500 votes. Thank that you. Votes. So even though this is not the November election, uh, votes votes matter on some level, even if they they don't matter anymore in something like this, getting actually uh, delegates for the uh, for the for the uh, uh, convention, and then who knows? Wouldn't yeah. it be fun if we picked up one or two? Absolutely, that is so cool to know that four hundred thousand plus votes yeah. for you. That mm -hmm. is beautiful. And where and, are you located? Where are you located? Um, we're, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. You know, hundred people are all over the all over the country. We've got well, we got we got 135,000 votes in California. So you know, think what it would have been if we had actually had the money to actually have the kind of and the exposure. So all good. We just have to keep on keeping on in whatever form uh, is available to us. And, and the and people who believe in you believe in you. It's not just like they're not just voting against Trump. They are voting for Marianne. And that's wow. also something that I think is really important. You know, how many people are voting for Biden versus voting against the other guy? Whereas when people, those 400,000 people were like, no, we are voting for Marianne because she represents our values. Well, I think also we have been trained in this country over the last few decades to expect so little. We're, we're not even told you have a right to say, no, I want Medicare for all. I want universal health care. I want tuition free college and tech school, like in every other advanced democracy. I want subsidized child care. I want a guaranteed living wage. I want a Department of Peace. Yeah, I want that. Like you said, Scott, not just, well, I don't want that other guy. So I'll take, no, it's, we want this. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, live into that vision of what you want. If you were offered the opportunity to create the Department of Peace, would you say yes? Of course I would, but I, let's not. Well, well, that's a vision we can I'm hold. As president, but uh, who know, I, you know, uh, I, listen, Scott, I think that I would do whatever I could possibly do to, you know, I haven't lived this long and worked this hard to do anything other than serve in whatever way I can. And you and I both know too, and I'm sure that this is true of a lot of people who are watching. Uh, this is my chapter three. You know, we want to go out with a bang. So I know a lot of us feel that way. Whatever, whatever is available where we can serve. I love that gospel song. God, use me. That's my favorite. I have I, from Agape all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you're part of the Nature Summit um, that we're supporting. And uh, my old friend Jane Fonda is on that. Uh, I ran a camper change ranch for 11 years in Santa Barbara. 
Um, and she coined the term that we are now in our third act. Mm -hmm. and we're in our third act, and it's the third act is when it all comes together, when all the different things we've learned and grown mm -hmm. come together and resolution takes place. And so bless you and myself and all of us all that of are us. in our third act, definitely the final act. Yeah. Thank you, darling. And no, it's not, as we know, it's not even the final. Yeah. Because there's no final. Right, right. The third act of this final movie. nature. Right, right. The third act of the of the movie of, of <laughs> yeah. the particular suit of clothes, yeah. Exactly. In our meat body. Thank you so much, Scott. God bless you, Marianne. Thank you so much. Have a great time at your event tonight and thank you for taking thank time you. for and congratulations to you. And and I know I thank you on behalf of everyone uh who's part of this tribe, as you say. Thank you for all that you contribute. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless, darling. Thank you. God bless. Take care. So I've brought up um, five amazing women that I love and adore that have been co-hosts for these shows. Um, and want to hear what each of you say. I'm going to just start with one thing. Did you notice how she how she was just beaming when the suggestion was made about starting the Department of Peace or running the Department of Peace? So let's all hold that vision. Because that's 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 a possibility. That could happen. That that is in the realm. So uh, I'd love to hear each of you what you'd like to share in terms of response to what you just heard or your own vision for an awakened world. Yeah. Go ahead, Larissa. Well, what comes really comes up for me is you know this is a a time of a really big contraction, and. That contraction, we see that as war, we see that as polarity on the planet, you know, we're, we're feeling it economically in all these different ways. But the truth really is, is that this contraction always happens before there's a really big expansion. And if we're going to move from like this idea she was talking about of war, I, I don't think we can even think about it in the same way. It's like, rather than focusing on being different, like, how do we stop war rather than thinking about how to stop war what comes up for me is like how do we create the new paradigms of really focusing on what we want so coming from that place of okay i want to like what we're doing here which is and deborah brought up like how we're all weaving and you bring up scott it's like we're we are truly collaborating from this place of of love and weaving together when we come together in this in this inspired um, space of love and remembering what we come from because that's just who we are it's just but it's like this necessary forgetting in order to grow right and if we choose to really create from that place of love we won't we won't even be in a space of even thinking about creating more from war because it won't be me mine because when we when we gather together and we're here to support each other that just doesn't even exist. And we're not trying to change what is out there rather than come from what we want. So, you know, talk about, you know, like awakening. I think the awakening is just remembering and acting from that remembering together in that collaborative space. And it, it, it has to be the we, the we of us. This is really you know, I've said it so many times, but there is no more evolution without evolution. There just isn't. You know, we're being asked to not evolve so much as we evolve. Like, how do we do this together? How do we move from that place of collaboration that is centered in love? So that's that's suggestive it for me. That's what comes up when I, you know, hear her speak and when I think of what we all stand for here together. I love what you're saying, Larissa. Um, it does take collaboration. And what many of us, even in our community here, are unwilling to see is how we show up in choosing not collaboration, but in choosing to dig into our beliefs and into the the violence of being right. And so I think that what it really takes is 
for us to sit in the discomfort of our own terror of being separate <laughs> from ourselves or from God or from any of the materials that we we long for and desire and to actually like to look at that insecurity and that not enoughness. I mean, individualism is, is kind of killing us all in the yes. world. <laughs> And to take a step back and to learn how to channel that frustration and anger into community benefit. So the triple win, what's good for me, what's good for you, and what's good for us all. And to actually really like challenge ourselves to see if we can get creative <laughs> and to really like say, hey, I have to change here to see how we can create a world that is is really truly what is the what the future needs for from us and it, it takes the inner work here <laughs> um and and what i want to say also is that so i hang out with gen z all day every day like these are my people now and i think about these people have the highest anxiety ratings right now they're terrified. They don't know what to do. They're they're just scared. They don't they don't collaborate. They don't connect. They don't have any social skills. And they're watching us. Like we are their mentors right now and in the world. So if we really, really want to change the world, we start fostering our love into the communities of these kids. Cause guess who's gonna really change our our lives <laughs> when we all stop working? Like they're our future. So if we can really support them and make friends with them and like say hi to all the kids wherever you are in the world and to really just like promote them feeling safe, it's just, it's just going to change. I say yes. That's, that's beautiful. It's really, we need to rise up in that way and be, we have to be the examples and we have to walk our talk. We, we have to do it. It's like, it's, it's. The time is done of us just talking about it. It's like, how do we really embody that transmission and and lead the way for those kids and and for ourselves, for for each other, you know? And we're, I swear to God, we're like still toddlers at it. Like we talk a really good talk, but we're toddlers. And I, I say that even for myself, you know, it's like, you know, when the triggers come up, you know, in community and, and how do I be with that within myself, you know, and, and the way the world is, we're all looking at each other now, you know, we all see, and it's like, if there's out of alignment over here, it spreads really fast. Like we all know stuff about each other. You know what I mean? You can't help it anymore the way social media is. And so it's calling us all forth to really deepen and move from that, that I, me, mine really into what you're talking about which is, it's the we, you know, and how do we take care of each other? How do we have each other's back instead of focusing so much on how do I get where I want to go? That's done. It's just, it, it, that's the way that's been hurting us. It's been, it's been killing us at the core to be, you know, moving from that place. So you're right, Trish, you're so right. You know, we do need to be that. If people are feeling really inspired, which I imagine almost everybody is, by what Trish and Luis are talking about, I want to point you to uh, two things that I put into the chat box. This is an amazing one-page document, the Six Global Agreements of the Weevolution. And Luisa did an entire three-hour show with us. I've also put the link to that show into the chat box. Um, and... Uh, it's a beautiful show. It's uh, There's a beautiful video she created. And there's these six beautiful principles um, to, to, to create the world that we all want to create. So um, I really want to encourage everybody, save the link to that video, watch it tomorrow, um, or watch it soon. Um, and uh, God bless you, Larissa, and the revolution. And Trish, you know, as each of you speak, it's like, oh my God, I just love each of you so much. And I want to hear from Rev Deb, Eden, and Tangila. Um, so I'm, I'm going to put the spotlight on Rev Deb. Um, most of you know her, but she is who helps to run the Evolutionary Leaders Network. 
and the Source of Synergy Foundation. She is tireless in her commitment to um, evolving our planet. And she's just really, really cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Rev Deb, I'm, I'm gonna put the spotlight on you and love to hear what you'd like to share. Well, thank you, Scott. I love being called cool. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Um, first of all, I, I wanna start by saying what I love best about the Global Peace Tribe. And that really starts with the name, the Global Peace Tribe. <laughs> the minute I heard that, I knew that you and Deborah were up to something really special, that you are, are, are gathering the tribe in a way that's so important. Everybody talks about our need, our yearning for community. And not only have you gathered an extraordinary community, of people who are leading this evolution at, at every level. But um, you also have committed yourself to showing up for that tribe every single week. Congratulations on this anniversary landmark. It's something so special and so inspiring. Uh, so I'm really thrilled to be a part of it. And it's been a joy to, to bring on some of our evolutionary leaders you already had had on uh, many of our luminaries when you were doing Saturday Night Alive. And um, I love that since then you've asked me, who can we bring on that people don't know so we can share their work? And what I just saw in the comments uh, it, to Marianne's video is the extraordinary level of alignment in this community. So everybody's nodding yes to everything that everybody else is saying. Where do you see that, especially in, in our divided world today? And I also wanna say a few words about this interview that you just played with Marianne Williamson, which I thought was just, beautiful and deeply touching. I've actually known Marianne for, I hate to think about this, but I think it's kind of like 40 years. <laughs> uh, ever since she used to come to Town Hall in New York to inspire people living with HIV and AIDS with her deep knowledge and understanding of A Course in Miracles. And she was such a gripping speaker that she could fill this huge theater in New York week after week, uh, just speaking and answering questions and being available to, to people, and especially to people in deep need. And so ever since then, I have considered Marianne to be an oracle. It, it's like she opens her mouth and truth emerges in such a powerful way that you can't help but get it. And so when she entered the political arena, um, I was a little nervous about that because, you know, <laughs> we've all seen that's not a place for deeply sensitive people, but she has so much courage. And I was thrilled to see her tonight because I know what kind of trauma she's been enduring uh, with the way she's treated by uh, this kind of crazy election process that we have in the United States where somehow we, we're given candidates and there don't seem to be alternatives. And where are all the brilliant visionaries, you know? But Marianne, she's not afraid. She's not afraid when she gets knocked down, she comes back up and to see her again relaxed and just sitting in her truth and speaking from her heart was very, very inspiring. And I loved some of the things that she said. Well, when she said that we're all experiencing an evolutionary impulse toward an awakened world, that of course is where I live as director of the Evolutionary Leaders Circle. It's all about that evolutionary impulse and I believe that's what brought all of you here to this program, is that evolutionary impulse. 
toward an awakened world. You feel it in deep in your soul and you know that you can be a part of co-creating it and bringing it into manifestation. And that is the hope that we need to hear. And that's why we tune in from week to week to listen to one another. And Scott, I love this about your program, to dance with one another. So yeah. thank you for bringing on artists and musicians and and people of uh, of, of spiritual wisdom and and uh, it's just it's a it's a cornucopia of riches. And I'm delighted that so many have gathered. Uh, to celebrate this anniversary this evening. And one more thing, I want to see Marianne's fourth act. <laughs> there you go. Well, that, that, that means we're all going to have a fourth act. Um, Why not? So, absolutely. And She's way, not done and neither are, neither are any not, of us. <laughs> not at all. And by the way, we are going to do a full um, interview and everybody put this in your calendar on Wednesday, May 15th. Wednesday, May 15th. We're going to do um, a full evening with Marianne. It'll be live, so all of you can come on and ask questions of her. So, Rev Deb, I love calling you Rev Deb. Um, <laughs> and we need to get on and work out a show for May, because we talked about doing a show together in May, and May's coming up. And again, which evolutionary leaders have we not had on the show yet that we can feature? So, I want to just remind you that um, I'd love to see us create that in May. And if not May, definitely early June. Um, I met your service, Scott. I love you very much. And Deborah, too. Absolutely. I love you, too. Um, well, I'm going to go to, we're going to hear, hopefully, from uh, everybody here that we haven't heard from yet. But I'm going to bring Tangila and Eden back up. Um, and they're actually, they've become friends. Um, I don't know if you met through through me or not, but yeah, you, you introduced us, Scott, and we got to meet in Sedona. All right. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah. Well, you both are amazing, and I love co-hosting with you, and we still collaborate frequently with both of you. Mm -hmm. Love to hear from both of you, your thoughts, and you know what your thoughts are. Let's start maybe with about Marianne, and then, of course, I'd love to uh, let the audience know what each of you are up to right now. Sure. Well, I love the interview with Marianne Scott. It was so beautiful and was also so beautiful to see that transformation in her energy from that, you know, the previous interview where we saw her when, where she was really raw with all of us about how much she had been really going through to, you know, bring this message, this, you know, new message. And it was just great to see her in her full power. And I think, you know, what she's doing is so important because it's not about her winning this election it's about you know the transformation of consciousness that is going on right now and she is a part of that you know she is opening up these discussions at a really really grand scale in the political arena that haven't been happening you know and you know she said she said it's not that there's any dearth of food it is just our collective consciousness that tolerates that even one child can go without food. And that is the truth of, of why is there war? Why is there poverty? Why is there environmental degradation? You know, we have technology now that can solve all of these problems. We have the ability and the collective consciousness to be at a place where we are not destroying one another, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, but it takes us to have the awareness of ourselves as individuals and then as a collective to do that. And she's really bringing that collective forward and having these conversations in the political arena. She said, you know, people are responding. People are hungry for this awakening. You know, th this is happening. And, you know, we have we see that, too, because, you know, we do huge live events every month and People are asking the questions they know that the world around us that we have been taught is, is the status quo is not real. And now as together we step into our power as individuals, we can begin visioning and then creating that new future together. And Marianne is really like bringing that people, you know, bringing this whole country on to this new collective effort and you know what and Scott what you've been doing with the global peace tribe bringing everyone together here in creating that frequency 
in bringing the bringing these conversations to light so that we can start having them with more and more and more and more people. It's not just for us to have in the new age community or in the spiritual community. This is these are the conversations that each one of us, you know, want to start having, you know, in the schools, in in our workplaces, everywhere where we can begin to start understanding that the programs and boxes of fear, separation, you know, are just boxes that have been created. And that's not the reality that we have to be living in any longer. You know, the separation, you know, based on, you know, all of these false paradigms that we've all held on to for so long, you know, they are now ready to crumble. And, you know, it's it's a big shift that's happening. And I'm just so grateful for Marianne for bringing this to like the national, you know, political context and forefront. And I just think it's amazing that, you know, we have someone like her who is a really amazing spiritual teacher and leader starting this conversation at the national level. And, you know, we're all here to support that as well. And we're going to keep bringing it out to the world with, with Larissa's Weevolution and like what, um, Trish, you were saying about having these conversations with, you know, the younger generation, that that's what this is all about, is just having these conversations about who we are as divine creator beings, you know, with everyone, because, you know, it doesn't matter if you use those terms, but it resonates, you know, we, when we begin to understand our sovereignty, that begins to resonate with us and we can begin creating something different. Beautifully stated. Beautifully stated. I want to. I'm. I'm going to give a shout out to each and every one of you throughout the evening. And uh, since Tanchila just spoke, I want to acknowledge you are doing a great job of bringing in new audiences. And your Soul Search uh, expos. You know, when I go there, I see a lot of people that are not. This is all new. Like they haven't heard Luis Sisto sing yet. They haven't been to Eden Amadora's. You know, uh, moon gathering yet. They haven't, you know, they don't know about the evolutionary leaders. They're they're newbies. And thank you for bringing in the newbies. Um, I am so grateful. And and you're bringing in newbies of all ages, of all colors, of all backgrounds. Um, it's it's really awesome, the work that you're doing, Tangela. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Scott. And yeah, it's exciting. I mean, you know, many of you all here have been to our Soul Search Enlightenment Expos, and it's amazing. We have people from every walk of life, completely new to spirituality, old, young, black, white, Hispanic, you know, just people who have never heard of being a star seed, who've never even done a meditation will come in and walk in and they'll say, I'm not even sure why I'm here but I was called to be here. And suddenly they go and get a reading or they go listen to a lecture on Akashic Records or they, you know, and you don't know what opens someone up, but once some once people start opening up, you know, there's a whole new world out there. And it's just really amazing to see, you know, it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are, what your background is, you know, your soul resonates and your soul knows. And once, once your soul begins to hear this language, all of a sudden sparks start flying and, 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 and a whole new world is born, you know? So it's just amazing to see. And Scott, thank you for all your support of Soul Search and everything that we do and all the whole Global Peace Tribe community here. You know, we're here to keep the community growing and growing and growing. For me, I love to see you know, you know, we have over a thousand people at each of our, you know, register for each of our events. We have two per month at the minimum. And we just want to keep growing and having more because for me to see and a lot of young people, a lot of young star seeds come to our events, which I love. And they're like, we are looking for something like this. They're look we had one in San Francisco where one of the performers from the drag brunch came and was like, I love this. We need this. We need this for our community. We need this for every community. Every community is searching, seeking, looking for uh, people to connect with in a non-judgmental way without separation, without fear. And, you know, we have that. We have that, you know, available through all of the amazing teachers and guides. So if you are interested, just go to soulsearch.io and then forward slash expo. So you'll also see if you go to the main thing, make sure you sign up on the email list and look at all the places they're doing the expos. Carlsbad, Santa Cruz, Buena Park, Emeryville, 
Scottsdale, San Rafael, Santa Clara. And every time I look, she's added two more cities. So um, <laughs> we actually have one this weekend in Carlsbad. So for any of you that are in Southern California, definitely come by Carlsbad. We have John Gray giving an amazing talk on enlightened sexuality tomorrow, as well as other incredible practitioners and healers speaking about quantum healing, feng shui. And of course, lots of incredible practitioners there. So for those of you who are in Carlsbad, come check us out. And then we'll be in Santa Cruz, Scotts Valley in two weeks. We'll have doctors JJ and Desiree Hertock there, uh, Alan Steinfeld doing a class on remote viewing, and uh, John Gray again will be there and many more. So, you know, we love to see everyone live and in person whenever we can. Beautiful. Great work. And we'll we'll be talking to Tangela more because we're going to talk about Soul Search TV. But we have not heard from Eden Amadora yet. Um, and so I'm going to put the spotlight on you, Eden. Um, you know, you've brought some of my favorite shows uh, you've co-hosted. Uh, the work with Mary Magdalene um, and the, just the beautiful divine feminine energy that you bring in the way you carry yourself in life um, and in the work that you do. So... Thank you so much for being such a big part of Global Peace Tribe. Thank you, Scott. I feel so honored. And you're just, you are holding the frequency. You are a compassionate, embodied, sacred, masculine being. So thank you for what you're doing here. And I was too with Tangila on the show with Marianne. And wow, I'm so delighted to see her now in the interview that you played, Scott. When we had her on the show in February, I got the opportunity to ask her a question about the divine feminine. And at that point, she was, you know, it was like she was pretty depleted and in her state, she said, where are my sisters now? And it, it was like there was a there was a lot of charge. It was like, you know, where are you in the, the 11th hour, or the dark hour when I need you? And I feel like she was really lifting the veil on how the divine feminine is so much about collaboration. And she now I can feel is feeling more supported. And that feels really, really good to see that and feel that she was a huge influence in my life. I was one of those people, I got to go see her in New York City back in the early 90s. And it completely changed the way I walked through the world. She invited everybody to look into the eyes of strangers and silently say, basically, namaste, like I see the place in you where the entire universe resides. We all know namaste here. It's like preaching to the choir, but for us to do that in the world, like Trish said, to, to lovingly smile at those Gen Zers, but also to those elders and to those veterans and to everyone from your heart through your eyes. That's what Marianne's gift was to me. And when I think about the divine feminine now, after you know meeting her as a young 20 something and feeling this powerful woman who can transmit and come from the heart that's us and not just in women's bodies it's like living in the heart it's living in our our sovereign center and i think we become so much more discerning and so much more aware of truth and you know the veils are lifting pretty obviously for everyone but for us when we're anchored in the heart we can feel resonance we can when marianne said we're here to serve or she's just here to serve no matter if it's you know, if she gets to debate or not, if she gets to how far she goes, she's here to serve. And my whole body lit up in resonance, in goosebumps, because that's what we're all being asked to do. We're being asked to come out of the, the root chakra survival, like everyone's been talking about, and into the heart. And for me, that is the awakening world. It's the world where we lead heart first. I mean, I got pretty emotional when she was talking tonight. It's just like, yes please we're doing it and deborah said it too even though it looks so bleak out there when you tune into your little rectangles you tune into the news that's not the whole story we're writing a new myth a new myth together a new story about this amazing triumph of love this amazing moment to be alive where we chose to come here and we are doing it 
So thank you, Marianne. Thank you for being such a brave forerunner, like a Joan of Arc for us. We're doing it. You know, one of the things about each and every one of you is that you all provide amazing offerings. And Eden is someone who's especially generous. Um, your Oracle office hours that you've been doing once a week where you do free card readings for people and, and really lift people's spirits. Um, and she's always doing these beautiful offerings free of charge just to spread the love and provide inspiration. And uh, you've got something new that you're about to offer. So I'm going to go to the website for it. I, this is the first I'd seen it, but it was today when you sent it to me. Tell us about uh, your offering on May 1st. Yeah, this is another gift from my heart. And it's it's really about what I was just talking about. It's like we rise together or together we rise. We, like Marianne said, this isn't about you and your green juice. This is about all of us connecting and awakening in each other's new storytelling together, inspiring each other by radically shifting the old stories into the empowering new story where you're the heroine, the hero of your own journey. So because of the 15 years deep I am in a divine feminine mystery school, it's not about little circles in person anymore. It's about bringing some of these powerful archetypal teachings to the world, sharing them and using the tools and practices that I've, I've got to see so many people popping like lotuses blossoming. It's now about like, how can we, how can we spread this and ripple this wider? So she rises is based on an archaeology, uh, excuse me, an archetypal goddess that we call the weaver dreamer. And some of you know the weaver as an archetype. And she's, she's the one that asks if you're not happy with the story you've been writing so far of your own reality movie, what would you change? So I'm excited to offer this, this free community, beautiful ceremony where we get to powerfully change some of those core beliefs and shift the energy and hold a frequency of such possibility. So that is She Rises. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That looks wonderful. Um, and I've put into the chat box uh, the link or go to edenamadora.com forward slash She Rises. edenamadora forward slash She Rises. Um, and uh, Eden, we'll come back to, to you and to everybody um, again. But there's a few other people I want to acknowledge. Um, I'm going to acknowledge some of the other people that help make uh, the awakening world happen. And this is Tammy, who is our website person. She helps me with our email blast. She keeps our website updated. Um, she's one of those people behind the scenes that I don't think I've ever spotlighted before who's a wonderful, wonderful part of our Global Peace Tribe team. So Tammy, thank you so much for all that you do. Um, and I hope you're enjoying the show tonight. And you just missed Marianne. You were both in New Mexico. I missed her. I know. I couldn't believe it. I'm sorry about the dog. <laughs> uh, I know I missed, but I'm going to go to Soul Search when, when they come to Santa Fe, though. So I'm still a little bit of a newbie myself to... Uh, to this whole process so awesome um, tammy excited to yeah. see you yeah me too me too oh that'll be a great meeting you guys are gonna have to take a photo and send it to me all right definitely Absolutely. yeah i'd love to help out any way i can tangela you 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 know spreading this message and and bringing love and joy to my community is that's that's such a wonderful thing i i, I love this community and i love being able to contribute to it all these years and um uh you know helping scott uh, bringing mm -hmm. all these wonderful shows and messages and bringing everybody together it it feels good to do this work it really does so thank mm. you well thank you both i also want to acknowledge Tammy. <laughs> i also want to acknowledge jay mayer and jan kaplan um uh jan back in saturday night live days i'm going to bring her up where there she is um, back in the Saturday Night Live days, she produced a lot of our shows, and uh, Jay was our executive producer, who uh, provided tremendous support that really made it all happen. Um, and they make music together. Some of you that are older timers 
uh, remember some of their videos. And just two hours or three hours ago now, Jay sent me a new video um, that he and Jan have created together called Easy as TMZ. So here's what Jay and Jan are up to right now. Easy as TMZ. Get to Washington. It's as easy as TMZ to get to Washington, D.C. Would I lie to you? That's what politicians do. That's what politicians do. That's what they do. Politicians lie cheap. Nicest bunch of people you ever hope to meet. On Independence Day, yeah, they had a big parade. Yeah, they had a big parade. Came and took the neighbors' kid away. Took the neighbors' kid away. Johnny away easy as A and E get to Washington DC easy as M T V to get to Washington Hmm Well I don't know why it's frozen. It's funny. I'm pressing play. I haven't done anything strange. Hmm. Well, I will have to put the link into the chat box and people will have to go watch and see how the video is. <laughs> try, I, try advancing the cursor just a little bit and then hitting play again, like physically move it. <clears throat> you know, the... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I just did. Um, I've never, I've been having issues. So here it is. Moving the cursor, I'm pressing play, and you can you see. You can re also reboot it, you know, up in the top. Right. Um, well, while I do that, I would love for uh, to just ask you, the two of you, I'll see if I can get it to reboot. Um, <laughs> chat for a moment. What are some of your favorite memories from when you were working on the show, Jan? Oh my gosh, it was <clears throat> so humbling and it was such a privilege to work with you and work with Deborah. And uh, of course, you know, Jay was executive producer. So it was just like our uh, a family and, um, you know, working with the uh, wisdom jewels that we did <laughs> in the Native American community. Um, was rich, um, really, really special getting to meet and work closely with Joanne Shenandoah, who I miss dearly, and mm -hmm. uh, just making the connections, uh, bringing in, you know, the Native American women, honoring them in Women's History Month uh, in, mm -hmm. in March, uh, that when we did that show, that was, I think, the highlight for me. <laughs> so giving their voice, letting their voices, uh, you know, the uh, tribal leader of the Iroquois, you know, bringing her on, uh, Louise, and anyway, it was so special. You know, thank you so much for bringing that up, actually, because that was a huge part mm. of what we did. And Jay sponsored several shows featuring Indigenous elders. Mm. And, um, and as you bring up uh, Joanne, Joanna Shenandoah, um, she's, of course, passed away. 
And, you know, it makes me think of several of the presenters that we've had on the show that are no longer in their in their bodies. Um, mm -hmm. Gary Zukov's wife, Linda Francis, they did a show together and Linda has passed on. And I know there's been a few others that, you know, uh, that have been with us that are no longer. So thank you for reminding us of that whole part of, of what we did. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful, rich time in the pandemic. <laughs> It was uh, the best pandemic there could have been for all of us, I think. Well, it did bring us together in beautiful ways. You know? right. um, it, it really is a, a privilege to be here and <clears throat> to have been able to help in any way to, you know, bring, you know, the brightest minds, you know, that, that we can find and with Deborah Juicy helping and all of her connections. And it's really, you know, our consciousness is what can change the world. And, you know, we're holding the space, uh, you know, we're holding the space for miracles for everyone and for the show, you know, shows like this is, this is really pure entertainment and we need a lot more of it. And uh, we thank you, Scott, for hanging in there and, you know, keep doing it every week. <laughs> 500 shows, 500 of them huh. is, you know, we're talking a lot about Saturday Night Live and the Awakening World, but I want to acknowledge all the shows I did with Trish, the straight talk shows, um, and also the Sacred Sunday shows. Um, and uh, I miss the Sacred Sunday shows. Um, so I don't know, maybe they'll come back. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm what I'm going to do is I'll put the link for people can watch the end of your uh, easiest TMZ, but you did send a wisdom jewel, and I think <laughs> this is going to play. So... For oh. those of you who go all the way back, remember the wonderful wisdom jewels every week or almost every week, Jay and Jan would provide wisdom jewels. So um, let me make sure that I've got the right setting that I've got to show sound. Yeah, that was a great joy. Mm -hmm. yeah, here we go. Here's a wisdom jewel from Jay and Jan, a little bit blast from the past. And of course, light touch has been a big part of what we've 
done. Um, Trish is with us, and Trish was one of your key people for Light Touch. I'm going to bring her back up. Um, and so just a reminder for anybody who's new, and a lot of comments coming in about saying, I love those wisdom jewels. Uh, Dr. Laura misses the wisdom jewels, so maybe we can get you to start doing more wisdom jewels for us again. And um, for people that are new, just refresh people's memories, or for newbies, what is Light Touch? Well, Light Touch is an opportunity to, uh, you know, to uh, activate the law of attraction. The whole premise of Light Touch is that we are magnetic. Energy has certain properties. It's magnetic. And when you do Light Touch, you actually send a message to the self that the self recognizes and uh, it activates the law of attraction, brings exponential financial blessings into your life, and especially when you have a group of people that support each other. So I'm gonna put a, a link in again, it's called Holding the Space, and it's open to everyone. And we all hold the space for miracles and good fortune and healing and everything that, that we need to you know, feel like we're fulfilling our purpose. So together we can give that to each other. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Jay and Jan. Hopefully we're gonna get more light touch, more videos and more wonderful things from you coming up. Thank you so much. Yum, yum. I wanna spotlight a couple of people that are doing really wonderful work. And then we're gonna to go to Johanna for another song. Mm -hmm. um, but there are two people that are in our audience that are doing wonderful work right now. Um, and one of them you just saw on Saturday night um, on the Global Peace Tribe show, Saturday night version recently, and that's Nikita Gearing. And for many, many years, Nikita has been creating and providing I am mantra um, every day for people. They get an email um, with the, the meditation for the day, the mantra for the day. You've been doing that for how many years now, Nikita? Uh, since 2009. Wow, five years, wow, oh, that's, uh, 15 15. years, 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my math for a moment, 15 <laughs> years. So people are acknowledging me for four years. I want to acknowledge you for 15 years of doing I Am Mantra. Thank you, Scott. I think all, all of us here who we've been each doing our own work for many years to build to this moment. And I want to acknowledge you Firstly, I want to acknowledge how you acknowledge everyone else. I want to acknowledge how you're so graciously do, as uh, Johanna said, the re-evolution. I want to acknowledge how much work goes into putting on a show like this every week, let alone multiple shows, and how gracefully and compassionately you do it, Scott. You, you know, you talk about maximum grace, you talk about your lineage with compassion, and you really model that. And I know you both professionally and personally, and I, I want to just say what a champion you are for the awakening world. And uh, if I could say anything tonight that is really dear in my heart, it is an experience I had with Arun Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi's grandson, when I was doing an event with him. And he talked about a teaching his grandfather gave him around active violence and passive violence. Now, it's very obvious what active violence is. There's things like war, you know, it's more physical violence, but there's also passive violence. And this was, this was in 2006 when I did this event with him and he talked about how passive violence shows up as thoughts, it shows up in how we, in just in the little things we do every day and what I gained from that was what we put out into the, the field, into the world and the collective matters, our thoughts towards others matter, our thoughts towards ourselves, either loving or fearful, loving, kind or, or aggressive, that we really, really are being called to move from understanding the wisdom right now, that we all understand and we've embodied. We, this is such a passionate important time so thank you for your patience with me many of us have awakened a certain wisdom and i think the shift now is really embodying the shift from fear into love from separation into unity on a daily 
basis. I think this is the critical time. We've been born for this moment. We've all been preparing and I'm, I'm just, I'm honored to be in circle. Bless all of the presenters tonight and bless all of the participants because each of us really make a difference. We really, really can. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Nikita. You, Thank you for the work you're doing. And again, everybody, go to IamMantra.com. IamMantra.com and receive I Am Mantra daily. It's free of charge. Um, so I am ready. And I, I know I enjoy every day getting my I Am Mantra. And then she also has now I Am Mantra Monthly. It's a beautiful monthly gathering um, uh, uh, on Sundays at 12 noon, uh, first Sunday of the month. But, um, I will look forward to seeing you on the next one of those, Nikita. And you know how this much I love and respect you. Thank you. Yes, you know, uh, I want to remind everybody that most of the people watching right now are watching on our broadcast partners, all the people watching on Facebook. By the way, I added earplugs because Fan Tuesday has started his concert. So if you're hearing rock and roll behind, I'm not sure how much is coming through. Let me know uh, if uh, you're hearing much of it. But Fan Tuesday has started his concert. And um, so that's why I added these. Let me know if you guys are still able to hear me just fine. Those of you watching on Facebook or on our broadcast partners, come and join us. Come join the Global Peace Tribe. And that way you're in the Zoom room, getting all the links, getting to, there's always amazing dialogue and conversation happening. Uh, usually I share a lot more of what's going on in the chat box, but there's so many wonderful people here that I wanna hear from. So I haven't read as many comments yet from my wonderful audience, but I wanna acknowledge Ellie and Ayata and Eleanor Shore and George and all the people that are chatting away in our chat box. Um, and it's really easy for those of you watching on Facebook, even if you're watching the recording of this, or maybe you're watching on Alan Steinfeld's YouTube channel or our own YouTube channel, please join us. That way you get the Zoom room links to all of our shows. Plus this month, I'm doing four extra events. Every week, we're going to have an extra event that's happening live somewhere, usually in the Bay Area, and then live streamed out to our audience. And it's really easy to join us. Just go to the globalpeacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com. And when you go there, you'll see, um, you'll be able to learn all about us, a little bit about our history, learn all about our shows. I'll take you there right now. Uh, there is what we've been talking so much about tonight, Saturday Night Live, the Global Peace Tribe and all the wonderful people that are on our shows. Magicians, Kristen Hoffman. Kristen um, uh, isn't able to join us today. She's in the recording studio this weekend, but she sends her love. And there's Deepak, Nina Gray, one of our favorite musical artists. And there's Trish and Patwin Antoinette, and so it goes. Anyway, join us. We do The Awakening World twice a week, every Wednesday and Saturday night. And then we also do these extra events. And it's easy, just click register for the new season. That'll take you to our registration page. You can come in for as little as $22 for students and seniors. So come and join us. You'll get all the Zoom room links to all of our shows for the next three months, plus all these special events that we're doing. Um, and it's really important for you to join us and participate. I'm gonna to go to Johanna Beekman. Uh, for uh, her second song of the night. Um, and then after that, we're going to hear from a wonderful friend who's got a great free summit coming up uh, that features Marianne Williamson, Jane Fonda, and many others. So stay tuned for that. But we're going to go back to Johanna. Hello, Johanna. And Chad, the wonderful Chad. Hi, good to be back. So we've been talking about how to fix all these problems in the world and it seems like it all comes back to how we're all connected and when we forget that we're connected that's when we suffer right and when we remember that we're connected and when we lift each other up and we are one like we really are meant to be we are in the new world so this one's called speaks to that and it's called heartbeats one we'll sing together if you'd like to sing and dance there are dance moves actually it goes like this my heart beats one your heart beats 
one. This heart beats one. Our hearts beat as one. My heart beats one. Right? So we can sing that together when it comes back around. Your heart beats one. This heart. This heart beats one. Our hearts beat as one. All right, you're all hired. Let's go. Let's do it. My backup dancers, we're on the internet road. All right. <laughs> My heart beats one. Your heart beats one. This heart. This heart beats one. I usually play guitar. Our hearts beat as one. My heart beats one. Your heart beats one. This heart beats one. Our hearts beat as one in our short, sweet lives. We'll come back to that. We're all searching for the light, the same light that makes trees thrive. Grow down, branches reach for the sky. I know inside that you and I, we share the same heart, the same soul. The same love, and I know everybody, my heart beats one, your heart, your heart beats one, this heart, this heart beats one, our hearts beat as one my heart beats one your heart beats one this heart beats one our hearts beat as one my heart beats one your heart
Your heart beats one. This heart beats one. Our hearts beat as one. That's all Twinkle, that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Johanna and Chad and that song. That is a perfect, perfect song for what we all are all about. Because it's yeah. true, Joanna. Ultimately, it does come down to seeing our oneness, living in the oneness, living in that, that divine understanding. Absolutely. Yeah. We want to see the end of oppression. We see each other as people. That's it. So thank you for being my people. We're all one. Love you, family. Um, if you want to... Go check out my yoga program. It's still online at my website. It's uh, johannasings.com slash five Hold days. On, I'll put on, it in the on. chat. We've talked about it before, but, you know, it and really where do starts. I find, I've, I've got it. I've got the, your johannasings.com slash five days. It's five days five to come days. home to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that spelled five days? Five. The, the number five. The number five. Let's try again. Yeah. That. So I really like to think about what we're all doing here is we're sharing tools because all of this change that we're talking about externally starts with internally. So if we're working with our nervous systems, with ourselves and doing the best we can to serve our own well-being, then we can serve the well-being of others. And my brand of yoga is Lullaby Yoga, where I bring sound healing, Chad is a sound healer, mantras, chant, and inner child journeys, meditation, pranayama to really reset the nervous system so we can meet the world in a different way with all of these benefits. Uh, then what can you need more than relaxation of the body, increased sense of calm, reduced tension and stress and all of the other things and sleeping better mostly just really being able to drop into that space more easily, especially when we're in the face of conflict to have a calm space that we can access is a really, really important thing. And that's, I think, what we're all doing as practitioners, healers, and people who are sharing in this community is helping each other, as in one of the words of one of our great teachers, Ram Das, walking each other home. So thanks for letting me speak to that. Thank you, Johanna, so much for being such a big part of Global Peace Tribe. I'm actually a little bit later on in the show, I'm going to show the video you created of doing everything with love. Um, so if you stick around, get a chance to see it. It's a great video that we, uh, that I had the idea and you ran with it. So everybody, we've got a great video uh, coming up with Johanna. We also have a wonderful video with Larissa coming up that Larissa will share with us. So as always, weaving music and presentation and it's my honor to introduce everybody to Sylvie. Um, and Sylvie has put together a beautiful, beautiful program, um, which we are in strong support of. Um, welcome to the Awakening World. Uh, Sylvie, it's good to see you again. Thank you so much for having me, Scott. And what a beautiful celebration. I'm really inspired to first hear this gorgeous music and also just all of the wisdom that's been shared. Um, some of you might know my film, Love Thy Nature, that uh, Liam Neeson narrated. And I have been honored and delighted to be working with my partner from Wisdom for Life to create a free summit that's called the Heart of Nature right on time for Earth Week that's coming up. It's actually starting on Tuesday. And the idea really is to heal ourselves and our world through the power of love and compassion. And so like Scott, like you mentioned, we have amazing speakers, 35 speakers, including Jane Fonda, Tara Brock, Michael Yellowbird, Marianne Williamson again, Matthew Fox, Peter Coyote, and, and many others. And the idea of the summit, what we really envisioned doing 
was to offer solutions that have to do with healing the self, everything from isolation to eco grief, powerlessness, and even trauma. And we offer that with practices that have to do with reciprocity with nature. So practices like forest bathing, eco-psychology, integrative medicine, and somatic healing with nature. And also the summit has to do with planetary healing. So it's healing self and world, even because we're no separate from nature, right? Indigenous peoples like to say, we are the land made human. And so the healing at a planetary level, it's all about really inspiring and empowering you to sort of like not only stop the unraveling of our natural systems, but actually help regenerate our mother earth through small daily actions and also joining other people and amazing groups out there that are doing extraordinary work. Some of the folks that we're featuring, we have a whole day that's dedicated to revitalizing indigenous wisdom. And I've been incredibly inspired to be talking with some of these indigenous leaders who share with us how they have been able to imbue their teachings and their wisdom to government systems, to legal systems even, which is the creation of uh, the rights of nature. And also at the heart of this issue is really about how indigenous peoples hold ecology and sacredness at the very core of everything they do. And I feel that that's what's missing for us in our modern world to really bring back the sense of wonder and awe and bring back the sense of the sacred and realizing that we are nature. And I know that Eden, you were talking about the deep feminine. We have a whole day that's dedicated to the deep feminine in the sense that it's not just for women, but it's across the gender spectrum, which is really the principle of caring, the principles of love, collaboration, cooperation, and of course, life affirming energy. So really balancing the sacred masculine masculine with the sacred feminine. And we have a whole day that's dedicated to dreaming a new world into being that is so much about what we've been talking about and also what Marianne Williamson was talking about. In this day, we're gonna be offering an opportunity to learn how to expand consciousness through psychedelics in a safe way. And also learning about like ecosystems restoration camps that are happening all around the world. Like there's a way to regenerate places that have been completely destroyed and create entire forests. And we have John D. Louis, who's actually talking about how he's been able to do that all over the world, of course, with a, a community of people. And also envisioning an evolved political system. And I thank Marianne Williamson for doing that. And also hearing how nature has already invented all of the sustainable technologies that we could ever dream of. It's the incredibly inspiring and powerful field that's called biomimicry. And of course, we end on Earth Day, right? April 22nd with Jane Fonda, Lynn Twist, Paul Hawken, Michael Yellowbird, myself, and Atosa Sultani. And we get to celebrate our Mother Earth with like incredible ideas of how not only like reverse the course that we've been in, but actually evolve ourselves to becoming a life affirming civilization, a life affirming species, which is what Mother Earth intends us to be. So I really feel deeply, folks, that we are the chosen ones. And I heard one of you on this call say that 
we are the generation that has the privilege to be alive right now on planet Earth so that we can be the creators of this new life affirming and yes, awakening world. So again, I would, I would love to have you join us and the summit starts on Tuesday. It's free and I have a link that I can share with you here so that you can all sign up. Um, I'll just do that on the chat. And, and I put the link in a couple of times in the chat box also. So maybe. Wonderful. So I might but, do it one more time. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Here it is again. Um, so, and this is going to be an amazing summit. So everybody, let's all continue to uh, support. And, and Sylvie, I know it's a lot to put together an event like this. So thank you so much for all that you are doing. And we're really looking forward to your, your incredible Nature Summit hearing with Shane Fonda and Ann Williamson and all your other presenters. Um, you've got Louis, uh, who made the, the Gratitude Movie. Louis is going to join us. We love Louis. Louis, Louis right. has been on the, on the show before. We love Louis. I'm sure, yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So, well, thank you for the opportunity to be sharing this. And I hope you enjoy the summit as much I, as I enjoyed co-creating it. <laughs> I'm going to take these ah! out. You're going to hear, you're going to hear a lot of fantasy music. This is um, our host of the show. This is Katrina Valancourt. Oh. And she's hosting this fantasy concert that's now happening downstairs. And um, uh, thank you, Sylvie. I'm going to turn it over to- My pleasure. Katrina, thank you. Uh, welcome to the Global Peace Tribe. We've had Marianne Williamson and many of your friends, Ian yes. Amadora, and all sorts of wonderful people so far. And beautiful. tell us what's happening downstairs. Yeah, we have a beautiful Fantuzzi celebration. I, I know many people here have come to know and love Fantuzzi as, as my husband, Stephen, and I certainly do. He is a global troubadour, just bringing so much love and light to so many people around the world. And so we're delighted that we get to share this concert with you all as a way to wrap up this four year anniversary of the Global Peace Tribe uh, coming coming back full circle with another Fantuzzi celebration. So yeah, wonderful to, to see you all and we hope you enjoy the music. <laughs> Thank you so much, Katrina. So when we're done with the kind of primary show, I'm gonna take my computer down and you're gonna we're going to move and groove to some Fantuzzi music. I am going to put these back in, though, because with them playing, it's a little bit hard to hear. I want to acknowledge a couple of other wonderful Earth Day events that are happening. So we all are going to join what Sylvia's doing. But there are two other events that are also... And I'm wondering why I'm getting my own echo. Um, I think somebody maybe was playing me. Whoops. No, we don't want that. So I'm going to mute everybody. So hold on, everybody, because I'm hearing an echo. Okay, now hopefully that's... We resolved the situation. Um, all right. I want to acknowledge what's happening on April 20th. Um, there's an Earth Day celebration going on that's going to feature a lot of our favorite people. Christian Hoffman and um, uh, Charles Eisenstein, beloved brother Chief Bill Lane, who was just on the show last week, Bruce Lipton, and many others. It was put on by Mitchell Rabin. Mitchell was in the show in the Zoom room audience tonight, although I think he's gone now. So that's on Saturday the 20th. Um, and it's great because you can watch that at four o'clock Pacific time, seven o'clock Eastern. And then as that wraps up, Saturday our Saturday night show will begin. And then there's another program and I want to acknowledge Andrew Kane, who's in the audience right now. Andrew's uh, came to our uh, Los Angeles retreat, Global Peace Tribe retreat. And he's got a World Peace Earth Day celebration going on that's going to be on Sunday, April 21st. And he's got some amazing people lined up for that. Look at all the people who are going to be involved. Our good friend Rick Ulfick, um, many, many others. So thank you, Andrew, 
from putting that together. And we certainly want to uh, support both of these events. Um, and we're gonna do an Awakening World Show on April 24th with the theme of every day is Earth Day. So not just celebrating up to, but continuing the celebration afterwards. So again, thank you, Sylvie. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, everybody, um, for all that you're doing. I'm going to go back to Tangela for a moment because um, she's got some really important stuff happening. Now, those of you who have been watching the shows recently, you've um, seen all about Soul Search TV. But what you don't know is that Soul Search TV has now expanded and after bringing all these great presenters uh, to the world, the best is yet to come and the best is Tangela herself. Tangela herself has a wonderful new uh, program uh, called the Enlightenment Experience. And um, I think we have a trailer here for it. I wanna make sure it's gonna play okay. It is. So we're going to talk to Tangela after we watch her trailer. Let's take a look. How do we get there? Is enlightenment possible for someone like you or me? For most of my life, I thought enlightenment was only reserved for a few chosen ones. But we no longer live in a world where we have to cut ourselves off and retreat to a mountaintop cave to reach nirvana. Enlightenment is within our reach in the here and now and there are infinite ways to get there. Join me as I sit down with the leading spiritual teachers of our time to dive into and explore the enlightenment experience. Together, we discuss how enlightenment is our collective journey at this time of humanity's evolution. And we explore tools, tips, and practices to support us on our own personal enlightenment journey. Each one of us can experience enlightenment in the midst of our human experience, and it is our divine birthright to do so. Congratulations, Tangela. Thank you, Scott. Thanks so much. We're really, I'm really excited about this show. <laughs> Well, you've got some amazing people. You've got Joan Gray, my friend, Marcy Shimoff. You know, my wife and I spent five weeks traveling through India with Marcy. Um, oh, wow, really? It was the same trip where we were with David Pamal and Beaton and a few others. And we were all together for five weeks in India. So um, we love Marcy. She's, of course, been on this show. But you're going to have the updated interview with her. And you're kicking it off, I believe, um, this week with um, uh, a very special guest. Yes, we, we actually launched the first episode of the show this past Thursday, and it's a wonderful interview with Dr. Sue Mortar. Uh, she's the author of The Energy Codes, and she really takes us into bridging, you know, quantum science and ancient practices of spirituality and really understanding how our body can support us in releasing all that we are not so we can step into who we truly are and you know this show the enlightenment experience it came about you know at soul search you know we have our online platform for spirituality and consciousness where we're supporting you know anyone wherever they are on their journey to connect to spiritual teachers and guides and then we have our enlightenment expos and then soul search tv is our newest platform where our practitioners can create shows, uh, documentaries, different programs that can be broadcast all over the world. And we came up with the Enlightenment Experience because like we were talking about earlier, we have so many people who come to our live events and to our platform and they're new to all of this. And, you know, again, one of the programs that we're all in is that, you know, Enlightenment is not something that's for us everyday people. You know, that's something that's reserved for, you know, these great masters and teachers. But who am I and how does that even concern someone like me? You know, and what's been really amazing to have these discussions with Sue, Dr. Sue Mortar, Shaman Direct, Matt Ka, Danian Brinkley, um, and so many more is that, you know, we are in this new era of spirituality and consciousness where we're releasing, you know, the spiritual hierarchies and beginning to really understand and come into that we, all of us are on this awakening journey. And, you know, there are so many different ways that we each 
awaken and remember who we truly are. And we're supported in that process uh, by, by all of these, you know, by our guides, our ascended masters, our, our ancestors. And of course, having these discussions um, really, you know, is to, is to support all of us in our understanding that, you know, there is a collective awakening happening and there's, a, you know, for each of us as individuals, this is an enlightenment journey, an awakening process. And it's something that's open to all of us and it is our birthright. And we have so many practices, teachings, tools that can really support us. And so whether it's a breath work practice, whether it's yoga, whether it's music and dance, you know, there's so many different ways that we are, we are supported. And it's really to open up this conversation in a way that's inclusive for all of us. So there is no more hierarchy of this person can reach enlightenment, but not me. And this person can reach it and not me. This is that we're all on an awakening journey together. And we're all one family. We're all completely supported. And there are so many different pathways where we can each follow on this journey of consciousness and evolution. It's like, you know, Marianne was even talking about, you know, we are in this evolutionary process of enlightenment and we are all seeking, we are all looking, we're all asking. And this is to open up that conversation to include all of us in this conversation as each of us are deserving to be on this path. We are on this path and, you know, we have so much support on this path. So it's a great show. I hope you guys can all tune in. All you have to do is go to soulsearch.tv if you want to watch it online at home. You can also watch the channel on your TV. Our channel is available on Roku, Amazon, Apple TV, Android TV. So you can just download the channel on your TV or you can also download our mobile app, Soul Search TV. And we have many different original series. Um, we've had a lot of amazing guests on this show. We're launching, I think, four new original series this month and many more to come. So definitely come in. And I think, uh, Scott, if you go up and you press on demand, um, I think you can go down to, you can um, scroll on the shows and, um, you know, yeah, so if you go down, there's just the trailers. If you keep scrolling down, there's a bunch of our other shows. I think you guys have seen Ashita and a Seal, and then there's the first episode of the Enlightenment Experience right down there, Scott, on the on right. the, with my interview with Dr. Sue Mortar. Yeah, online, and you can just click on that, and it'll just take you to the page. And um, and so you know, our channel is free, so there's no subscription required. You can tune in. And definitely tune in for our whole series. We have a new episode launching every Thursday. Um, this coming week, we have an episode with Shaman Durek. And so if you guys have not met or know Shaman Durek, he's an incredible shaman to the stars, as he's called and known in social media. But he is really wise and really connected. And he talks about the shamanic path of enlightenment and what that really means. So Dr. Sue Mortar, to Shaman Direct and many, many more. We have incredible teachers, including a lot of younger spiritual influencers as well that I interviewed. And it's it's a great experience. And we want to hear all of your guys' feedback as well about what you think of the show, questions for our um for the teachers that I've interviewed. And we want to have this uh, an ongoing discussion and conversation for all of us. Thank you for all that you do, Tangela. Absolutely. And I'm looking forward to our next show together, which will be coming up uh, on May 4th. May 4th. May 4th. May 4th. May 4th. Yes. All right. So, Scott, well, I just, I just want to say thank you for everything you do. You are just such a beacon of light for, you know, our entire community. You are the awakening world. <laughs> You know, you are awakening all, all of us in every moment. And I really want to acknowledge you for your commitment, fortitude, the hard work you put in, your dedication and love for the Global Peace Tribe, for the awakening of humanity. And, you know, I mean, I'm just getting emotional because I, I love you so much. Oh, attention. Oh, I love you too. I love you too. We're doing it. We're doing it. Yeah. Thank you so much for everything. Hmm. I'm sorry, I'm crying. No, are you kidding? This is like the highlight of my of my my show. 
you know? Yeah, but because the tears our tears are precious. Mm -hmm. And so it it just shows your dedication to this work and, and what we're all doing. So mm -hmm. your tears are amazing. Thank you so much. Well, I just appreciate you and honor you and thank you and Deborah for leading the way for all of us. I wouldn't you you're the one who gave me my first chance to even speak <laughs> online. For those of you who don't know, I was on the Awakening World for the two year anniversary. And Soul Search was like the show sponsor. And that was my first time online, on camera, even speaking about anything spiritual. And I was so nervous. And Scott, just thank you so much for all you do to support so many of us um, to bring all of these messages and all of this work out to the world. You know, I love you. You're so loved. You're so just appreciated and supported by me and by so many others. Thank you. Well, you know, it's... You just inspired me to play something. You know, I was going through you know, the video archives, kind of picking out, okay, what am I going to uh, show? And um, there was, you actually first came on and you sponsored mm -hmm. our um, our anniversary show two years ago. It was our two year anniversary. And I think, yes, you sponsored it. And so, I found the trailer for that show. So here's a little flashback in time. This is, I just met Tanjila. She came in through Deborah Giusti. She sponsored our anniversary show of two years ago. And this is the trailer narrated by Elizabeth April. Um, so we're going to watch that trailer and then we're going to go to Louisa Stella after this. But um, here's a little flashback in time for you. Uh, here we go. <laughs> By April of 2020, the majority of the world had become a completely different place. What are your primary memories of that spring? Lockdowns, masks, isolation, scary news reports? Well, I've got another memory for you. In the midst of a massive global change, Saturday Night Alive brought us hope, inspiration, and connection to our great global community. Hello, I'm Elizabeth April, and I want to invite you to a very special weekend on the Awakening World. On Saturday, April 16th, the second anniversary of Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe, let's celebrate you and all that we have learned together during this alchemical time. During this anniversary weekend, many of your favorite luminaries and musical artists will be joining us. Some of our guest luminaries include Marianne Williamson, Matt Kahn, Neil Donald Walsh, Reverend Michael Beckwith, Caroline Meese, Gary Zukov, The Twin Ray, Andrew Harvey, and myself, Elizabeth April. As always, there will also be wonderful music, including Jai Utah, Kristen Hoffman, Larissa Stowe, Cornflower, Nina Gray, and others. Our higher selves know that we are inherently interconnected and that what affects one part of the globe has the potential to affect the entire planet. Saturday Night Alive led to a global peace tribe coming together for 111 weeks in a row and are still going strong. We are truly one family, one planet, and one global peace tribe, helping to usher in a new, beautiful future together. Join us for more enlightening media during these exceptional times to keep you encouraged, connected, inspired, and uplifted. And you sponsored that show, Tangela. Yes, that was an awesome yeah. show. It was an That was an awesome show. That was a show. It was a four-hour show. It, went it on was, and on. it was. And it sparked our ongoing relationship. relationship. And that was your first time coming out speaking online uh, 
and and you did great. I remember oh, you. You thank did great. You. Thank uh, you. And of so course, much, on Bob. that show, because she's yeah. always part of us, Larissa Stowe was there uh, with us two years ago. Um, as Larissa has been with us so much, um, mm. and here she is still tonight with us. And Larissa, I am just so grateful for you. Um, I'm grateful for you, Scott, and I'm so grateful, like, for the connections and seeing Tangila, like, just seeing you open up and be vulnerable and just shows how much you care, you know, and your deep gratitude, and that's what this is all about, right? This connection, like, connecting deeply. It's really beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Larissa, I would love for you to share with the audience a little bit more about Shiloh and um, about the evolution and just really what you are creating because you are, like Tangila, you're one of the great community builders that I know. Um, and so I, I want to give you a little bit of time to let people know more about your Shakti Love Warriors, uh, Shiloh, what you're doing to create community. Well, like a lot of people, like there's been so many of us that, you know, pre-pandemic for many, many years, we have been receiving these downloads about needing to really find land with water. I, I was one of those people about 20 years ago that started receiving these messages. And I sensed that it was going to be necessary for us to come together as community to create in different ways to create together rather than being in our own little separate places. And I was very inspired. So on one hand, I was seeing that it was going to be necessary. I was like told that by my, what I call the frequencies that that water was going to be worth more than gold in the future and that it was going to be necessary for us to become more sustainable, self-sustaining, and that we were going to really have to come together to take care of each other and go back to our roots of more of that indigenous of, of sharing and weaving together and lifting each other up. So like during, it was really interesting, like when the pandemic hit, it like just, it got louder and louder and louder, like the voices, like it's time. So it, for me, I was inspired in two ways. Number one, just knowing that I've been hearing this for a long time, but number two, just feeling like my own growth had hit a certain point. And that as much as I would talk about all these wonderful concepts of oneness and heart centered living, um, I started to feel like, well, Larissa, that's easy to do, you know, when you're not like full on with people, like having your, your feet, you know, in the mud and in the, and really working the soil. And I felt like I needed to up level myself and really put my, you know, <laughs> put my, my words, you know, into actual embodiment to embody what I was saying. So I just knew it was time. And I got very inspired by a retreat that I led in, I think it was 2021 in Cornville, Arizona, which is about 20 miles south of Sedona. And I never thought I would move to Arizona, believe me. <laughs> I'm like, I love California, I love the beach. But you know what, I really, really love Sedona and that area too. And when I was in Cornville, there was just this feeling that, okay, this is a place that we could do it. This is the place. So we started looking for land and found this beautiful land that was an ashram, a Shivananda ashram that was up for sale. And it felt like the right thing to do. And it felt really big and really scary. And like, how are we going to do this? And it took a really big leap of faith. Um, but that's what we did. And I didn't just do it by myself. Like part of the vision was this is not just a me vision. This is a we vision. And to do it alone would not be really what the vision was about. Because the vision, 
I've been called to really step into this place of linking arms and hearts with my community and believe and trust in my tribe. And even though we hadn't done anything like this before, it's like, you know, getting married to one person is enough, you know, like much less getting married to a community of people, you know, it takes really big faith and dedication and commitment. But that's what my spirit really was called to do because I believe that this is something that's necessary. And while I know that I don't, have the all the skills in the world you know to do this gracefully every day um it felt necessary and a part of my not only my own evolution but the evolution of the community and so we are learning it's like it's it's in process you know it's an experiment of truth and gandhi talked about that and i was very inspired by gandhi you know, with his ashram and, and he called it an experiment of truth because he didn't know either, like, well, there's no like book out there that says this is exactly how you do it. We're still learning as we go. And so it's, it's incredible and it's necessary for where we're going. And I'm very grateful and very humbled <laughs> by the experience of it all and also really excited i'm just so grateful to have this opportunity and so grateful that the six global agreements were something that already were created by myself and others in the community and the in the we space also inspired very much inspired by you scott um, and your work in the world that these six global agreements have given me like a place to stand. Like we have them framed. I didn't even frame them. One of the people who lives there, Pamela, she framed the six global agreements and you find them in the bathroom, <laughs> you find them in the living space. And it's like a foundational cornerstone of how we agree to communicate with each other. Um, and when there's conflict and there has been you know people have different ways of seeing things and it's inevitable and as a community grows there's going to be more opportunities for people to have different viewpoints so how we express ourselves is key to how we are able to create from love you know to to live in that heart-centered inspired place and these agreements they make all the difference in the world. Um, so I'm, I'm so grateful and I'm so excited to share Shiloh with the community because it is truly a wee space. And it's not only for me and the retreats that I'm excited to share with the world, but also for the luminaries in our community. It's a space for others to share their visions and their teachings and their insights because we're all given very unique you know medicine to share with the world you know like each one of us has a special little thumbprint we all come with very unique medicine to share and we attract and magnetize that you know our tribe and the ones that we're meant to share with and this is a space for those who feel that call so i'm i'm just deeply humbled by the whole experience and very excited, very excited to share. So I put into the chat box um, again, the show that we did, an entire beautiful show all about the six agreements. Um, and during that show, there was this beautiful video that, that you played and I'm gonna play it in a few minutes or in a minute. Um, and it's your version of My Sweet Lord. And um, playing the violin on it is uh, is Bethany. Yeah, our Bethany um, Grace. Who, of course, Bethany Grace, who has an extraordinary story. We've featured her on the show a couple of times now. And what she's overcome, overcoming the murder of her, her daughter mm -hmm. and overcoming just horrific things yeah. in life, to still open her heart and be such a, a beacon of love and so she um, is she is a true true angel <laughs> that bethany great and she called 
She didn't even know it was happening tonight, and she called during this show. No way. I did, and I was like writing her, I'm on Awakening World right now, Bethany Grace. And she was <laughs> heading in to do a concert. So she said, I would, I would have jumped on. She wrote me and said, I would have jumped on if I could, but I'm driving <laughs> to the concert. Well, we're all about to see Bethany play, playing the violin um, in this wonderful vision. And I, I love this video. First, it's very well produced and it's beautiful. And it's a song we all love. But it's so you, Louisa. You are your love of of the divine is so powerful, and so your your love for God, your love for the divine, your love for humanity, whatever you want to call it, it's all one. It comes through very strongly in the passion in which you sing this beautiful, beautiful song. This tribute Thank to George you. Harrison. This tribute to. Um, to our sweet Lord. So here we go. Thank you, Scott.
Are you okay? Couldn't cut it off. There's no way. It's so <laughs> I was wondering. I'm, I'm like, he's just taking it all the way. <laughs> I know. I, I, how could I cut cut off? There's no <laughs> way. So you know, we got to see Paramahansa Yogananda, who was our master that brought us all together. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but I thought I'd uh, add Johanna and Tanchila because I know you were both great lovers of art. Isn't that a beautifully produced video? Absolutely amazing. It was so beautiful, Larissa. Just the entire thing. Gorgeous. And your voice, of course, is incredible. And you're bringing through the, you know, love of the divine in such a beautiful way. And all of the musicians just coming together. Every Each one was so incredible. So the way you weaved all of that together, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Thank you. Thank you. But I, I can't take the credit for weaving it all together. That was Bethany Grace. Mm. Yeah, she was she was the one behind the scenes, you know, bringing everybody together. She, you know, she brought everyone together. You know, her Hutchins string quartet, the Hutchins, she brought all of them and brought Shakti tribe. So it was really incredible. Yeah, she's was the visionary, just like Johanna created that video that brought everyone together. Yeah. So I just got to show up and just sing and, and host the space of my temple to have musicians come and utilize that space. It's a weaving. That's what we're doing here, right? You know, I haven't had a chance to read many comments from the audience, but I am going to um, read a few. And Margie is asking about uh, more information about the Shiloh community. So maybe you can put something in the chat box there. Um, Ellie writes, it was beautiful to witness your state of bliss and nirvana, Larissa, so connected with the divine, beautiful. I agree, watching you dance in that video is one of my favorite parts of it. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, Ayana yeah. writes, watching Scott it, having... and Larissa, that song was powerful medicine. I just felt lifted off and into the ecstatic state we all sometimes touch into, bring it on. And Dia writes, wonderful musicianship, maximum gratitude to each and all artists. And Johanna, we haven't heard from you. Any, anything you'd like to share 
in watching that video. I just, after being in your space and with your band over the years, I feel like it was like snippets of the behind the scenes. And I love how you did that, that it feels like we were a part of the making of it with there's a microphone in every single person's shot. I mean, the production took a long time, I'm sure. And it must be so lovely to have such a beautiful community to rely on so that you can just fly in your artistry. I always end up, I like to make a lot of things happen. Let's just say that visionary that also likes to create it. And then I lose time because I'm creating and like editing and stuff. So amazing that Bethany showed up in that way and was able to orchestrate everyone coming together. But really, I just always see you lifted and giving your love to people when we're in person at festivals. I just see the way that you radiate and people really gravitate towards you. And that video really showed kind of the way that you interact with the world. It's very inclusive. And wow, what a singer. What, who was the second singer? Um, I'm going to, I'm just like, it's, um, I knew, like, I'm like, the second you asked me, uh, I'm just spacing on her name. It's, I haven't seen I her. I just before. read her name and I can't, oh. I just never seen her it before. It starts with a T. She is, yeah, she, she is a doll she is so so sweet and um what year did you record that we recorded that well it was during the pandemic and it was right before wasn't it right around when we did one of the anniversary shows scott do you remember I think so yeah yeah oh. um, uh you did you did um yeah i think it was about two years ago tolly is that her ago. name yes Yes, 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 oh. yes. And I, it's like, she has a interesting spelling of it. Yeah, she's a, she's a force of nature. Um, she actually sang on a night with Janis Joplin. She was on Broadway, like she was one of the, the backup singers. Um, oh. Yeah. Tawny, is it Tawny, Tawny Dolly? I'm like, just, it's, it's coming back. She's, it's yeah. It's come the minute the, the I know, I think here. it's Tony. Yeah. And it's like, it's yeah. so funny. Cause I was like, Tangela with Tangela being here. It's, it's so like close to, it's like, that's why my brain went. Rah! Cause it's, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's a, it's like Tony. I think beautiful. it's Tony Dolly. Yeah. She's amazing. And she was a part of that show. Mm. Yeah. She's. Of well, course, it me. spoke to a lot that's going on in the world, just the way you produced it and brought so many different people together. I just really had no idea you had done that. And so I'm really glad I was on tonight to experience because we're all doing again, all Bethany Grace. <laughs> yeah, we have to give credit. That's one thing in life that I think is so important, a part of the Weevolution. Yes, thank you. A lot of times, Grace. you know, what we do is I see people kind of like take you know, and like, oh, yeah, like take credit for it. And it's like, it, we all have our specific medicine we're bringing to the world. And the more that we can really honor each other, I think it's really important to give credit where credit is due. Yeah. And um, that was Bethany Grace, like, and her brother is the one who edited and did the shooting of the video. And she really, she was like there and then Benj jumped in you know, who's in Shakti tribe. And he really jumped in and helped with some of the behind the scenes production of the sound of the recording of it as well. He got involved in that. So there's, there were so many people that jumped in, but if it weren't for Bethany, like leading the charge, she had the vision of it. She saw it. She felt like it was really important that that needed to happen. And she wanted to bring us all together. So Bethany Grace, <laughs> maximum grace for bethany bethany grace, grace. Like I, I cannot say enough about our bethany grace oh. you know she is just she is amazing on so many different levels not only is she like the most incredible violin player you know that i've ever experienced i mean she is just beyond the beyond as a virtuoso but she who she is like as a human, you know, she's like one of my favorite humans on the planet. And you know, like when we get to know people really, really well, like when we get 
and we know them like super, super close, what happens a lot of times is that our wounds can get brought up. And I have to say, like, and you'll see people kind of drift and that is just like impossible with the Bethany Grace, you know, with who she is and how she sh continues to show up. And even in the face of of behind the scenes, what y'all don't see that happens with bands and the conflicts that happens, you know, how she's able to show up is just so stellar. I just can't say enough of our Bethany Grace. Um, and now that we're all talking, I'm pretty sure it is Tawny Dolly. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so and Randy what? Johnson is a dear friend who he's the one who wrote A Night with Janis Joplin and, and Tawny was a part of that. But I knew Tawny even before she connected with with Randy, who I had known from before. It's just amazing how everybody weaves together too. So I just put into the chat box uh, the link of when Bethany was on the show and she told her story about overcoming the, the murder of her daughter. And mm -hmm. then the terrible thing that happened to her physically. And then she plays While My Guitar Gently Weeps on Violin. Um, and it's an amazing 18-minute video. I've just put the link into the chat box. We're not going to have time to play it tonight. But uh, since we've talked about Bethany, I encourage everybody to copy that link and play it when the show is over. Because it's, it's an extraordinary moment. But we are going to go to an extraordinary moment that Johanna created. Um, and, uh, you know, I love the Beatles. We all love the Beatles. But they got it wrong. All you need is love is not right. You need more than love. And you need to do everything with love. And that's something that I've learned in my years. It's about doing it with love. And so I, I mentioned that to Johanna. I said, could you, like, take that and riff it? And you know, turned it into something, which she did. And then we added photographs of some of our Global Peace Tribe luminaries. So here is the amazing Johanna uh, and what she did with Do Everything With Love and uh, a chance for us to see some of her beautiful luminaries. And what's interesting is three of the images you're gonna see are people that are no longer in their body, people that have passed away since um, since we started doing these shows. So anyway, here we go. Do everything with love. Do everything with love. Do everything with love. It's easy. Everything with love, do everything with love, do everything with love, it's easy. Everything. Do everything with love. Do everything with love. Do everything with love. It's easy. Yeah. Do everything with love. Do everything with love. Yeah. You know what's funny, Scott, is you played the wrong video. Where's everyone on there? All of the beautiful people. I'm like watching me sing in my studio and we're talking over each other because you're muted. I love you. 
<laughs> You're like, but wait! Fan Tuesday's in the house! Hey, brother! Oh, my god! Hi, family! Oh, my god! Fan <laughs> oh, nice Hey, to brother! See you guys. We're still oh. here! We're still oh. here! Where's your show? Are you done singing? Your no, show's we just over? stopped to eat cake! I said, let him eat cake! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I've been touring with uh, Mr. Uh, Krishnadas, selling out 4,000 people halls. And uh, it's wonderful right. to be on Spotlight's not on me. It's on him. And I just help him out with percussion. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Restful, you know what I mean? So fun. <laughs> Look at Jack. Congrats. So, you know, some of your friends that you know that are here with us. Uh, there's Connie and Jan and Tangila, of course. Um, and my God, how many times have you played at festivals with Johanna and Larissa? So oh, many. A lot. So many. <laughs> but so not much. too many and not enough. Not enough. Let's go, <laughs> brother. Let's go. Let's do it some more, right? More and more. Yes. More. <laughs> more. <laughs> I remember the first time I sang with you, we were on the East Coast, Tuesday, and you pulled me on stage and we just started jamming. It was just a total improv. No one knew what was happening. And I was like, this dude's my guy. Like, we can <laughs> jam all night long. So let's do it again. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are going to be a Fest this year. Bhakti Fest. No for me, but I don't know about you. Are you going to be there? No. I'm not going to put my name on the thing, so I guess so. I think I'm Fantastic. I'm going to be an aunt and my dog's old, so I'm at home right here in the studio making new music that we can all listen to later. Oh, that's Aren't you excited for new music? It's the other stuff sad, whatever, but you know, to be present for that's really important. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm doing a Love Warrior uh, boot camp in Hawaii on my, on my name. That's right. We're going to do, a We're going to do, right a on. do yoga, you meditation, dancing, all that good stuff and more. Mm. We, got it, we got it ready. We got it ready. I've been working for five months over there. Where oh, the you've been doing I'm that. Trying to Johanna, there she is. Um, I want to make sure everybody can see you and Larissa. And of course, Larissa has her Shakti Love Warriors. Can you talk about Love Warriors? Yeah, really? Yeah. Is that yeah. one? I, I, you know, it's a. It is a universal thing to be in a body and to choose to be in a body and to be the love is truly a love warrior, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> we are warriors of love. That is for sure. Yeah, yes. we have to be bold as love and be fearless and be present to serve like Hanuman, you know, like Hanuman, you know, be strong, be devoted, right? Yeah, so have all that, you know, unified and especially now with all the craziness that is going on in the world. Yeah, more so than ever. Exactly. It always is though. It's it's all about that. It's all about embodying it, you know, making it real through oh. being the love, right? And doing everything with love. Oh, thank you for that song. I enjoyed it. It might be not <laughs> when you expected, but man, it was great. <laughs> Hey, hey, you know, I just like to sing. Well, thank you, brother. I'm sorry that you aren't singing for us right now, but I know well, you're on a break, so I won't ask you. you. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. You're going to sing? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's going to happen is when we're done with the main show, I'm going to take my laptop computer downstairs, and we're going to live stream uh, your next round of songs. Okay. Well, I'm going to go back to their work then. Uh, right. Get the boys, crack that whip. We've had them eating up cake. <laughs> we time to get back to work, which is love made visible. Yeah. I'm working in Do it all with love, brother. Yeah. Love you. Mwah, mwah, I'll be down mwah. in about 10 minutes. Hey, Khalil, how are you? Good to see you. Hello. 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 Fan Tuesday's son. What up, everyone? Hello. Hello. Hi. Working on a new film in Colombia, in Medellin, about how young people are using hip hop, art, and culture as a movement for peace. And uh, mm. the worldwide phenomenon, we're making moves. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you. You're a great filmmaker. Right Thank on. you. Keep up the good work. There's a whole party going downstairs. There's like <laughs> this whole thing happening. And isn't it amazing? It all started with the Fantuzzi thing and our anniversary. And it's it's a spirit thing. 
Yes. It's like we were talking about, it's like, it's like the finger of God or the hand of God, you know, just showing how everything is in divine alignment and divine timing, you know, that there is this plan, there is a sacred journey that's unfolding and it's on time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, since I'm going to get down this soon, I'm going to conclude with one last piece because there's one other very important person uh, who I would not still be doing the Awakening World if it wasn't for Omar Shar. And um, uh, yeah, our beloved brother is down in England with his mom, but um, he sent a message to us. Mm. And this is from a couple of days ago. As we are celebrating all the wonderful co-hosts that have been on our shows, well, then comes Omar Shar. And Omar Shar has brought so much love and so much dedication to this show. I don't know if I would still be doing The Awakening World if Omar Shar hadn't showed up. And, um, and he's showing up even on our anniversary show, even while he's in England taking care of his mom. Beloved Omar Shar, we love you. I, I'm so grateful, Scott. And, and as you speak, I have tingles going up and down my spine because it's, you know, it's it's when the frequencies are right, we don't even have to put out to the universe who to come in contact with because we just get drawn together. And I know that has happened for all of the participants, all of our beautiful family on the Awakening World Show and all of the guests that come onto it and thee and me. It's just a resonant frequency. And, and, and this is all about awakening 100%. It's it's the real deal. There's no turning back. It's not a practice. You know, we're doing it. And and this show for me has has been I would I would have said in the past my church, but it has been my it has been a part of my awakening. Because even though I do like you, your practices and your meditations and your nature grounding and the online work every single day, it's actually meeting with the like-minded souls of the Awakening World Tribe, the Global Peace Tribe, that has made it real, real and alive for me. And uh, and, and and I'm blessed to be here in Stratford upon Avon, no, which of no. course is um, Shakespeare's town. And Shakespeare and Saint Germain, they have a a bit of a union with each other. And just as a um, an aside, the, the, the backdrop behind me is the Royal Shakespeare Theatre Gardens. And this um, tree on the left is called a plane tree, P-L-A-N-E. It is planted at the time that Shakespeare was born. So it's over 400 years old. And just on the left of it is the very flooded River Avon. It was amazingly flooded, so flooded that uh, they couldn't ha they couldn't um, hire the rowboats out there because the rowboats would go downstream, but they wouldn't be able to get back upstream again. Anyway, that's kind of an aside, but it's, it's where I am at the moment. And uh, and I'm here with my mother. And um, you know what is very interesting is the presence and the love that I've given this woman has kind of given her a little bit of faith and hope again. And um, because when I'm not here, there's just kind of continual entropy. And so I'm kind of saying that is because when we truly infill ourselves with spirit, with soul, with divine, with the friend, wherever we friends uh, that we are, um, wherever we go on this planet, we affect the field around us. And um, what do you think about that, Scott, so far? I think it's, first of all, you bring so much love to everything you do whether it's your music, and in this case, for the last few weeks, to your mother. Um, and I also want to acknowledge the rain. There's a tree behind Omar Shah. There's a beautiful rainbow. Yeah. What? I'm asking every one of our co-hosts that's on the show, is there any particular memory that springs to mind? I mean, of course, you and I have done... You've been you've been our house musical artist for well over two years, more than half of our time. But are there any particular memories that right off the bat bounce into your into your brain? Well, um, Matt Khan um, and um, the um, the the channeling duo. Um, what are they called? Oh, um, um, anyway, those Anthony ones. And um, Anthony and Renee. Um, no. 
those actually yes as you bring them to me yes absolutely no the two gentlemen um who do this. oh the two guys from soul search i know Towers and aj aj they, and just, Towers. they just they just jumped into my consciousness That's i'm just i'm yeah i'm just bringing that back in and 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 the joy and of course um the musicians always because it's kind of like uh, in the words of julie andrews they're the sugar that helps the medicine go down but in this day and age it's the agave which helps the divine truth be imbibed and you know tatiana speed and um nina gray and uh um johanna beekman and all of these beautiful and fantuzzi which was a little bit before my time but i've i've known him for years in vicariously because um i used to be the um musical director for unity church in hawaii and we hosted him of course one time and um, what a force of nature he is so I'm so glad that he's on the show tonight and um, actually the night that it is we're pre-recording this but you didn't hear that and uh, <laughs> and and I could just bring my mind back because every time that I have been on the show no matter what it is whether we're talking about mental health or the divine feminine or our connection to um, um, Christ and uh, Christ consciousness I, I have felt enlivened every time I might have been might have had a bit of a bummer day but I've left the show just feeling full and feeling on purpose and uh, I know that as it, it will continue and it is continuing and uh, uh, you know we do need help we do need um, someone to lean on and someone to be for instance um, help the show further itself and I hear that you possibly wouldn't have continued the show if I hadn't turned up and I'm grateful for that acknowledgement because holy smoke, what a, what a how what what a praise for me, um, and uh, I just feel that we all need that um, somebody to lean on because you know we come on the show we're sparky we're alive but we have our human moments we have our human stuff to walk through every single day, and to keep on enfolding ourselves back into the heart which we're doing amazingly and uh, you know I know all of us on the all of our global peace tribers we've been through hell and back and luckily the hell is becoming become i put an o on the end now it's hello and uh right because it's not because we're realizing it's a choice it really is a choice even though we're undergoing some major things um it's a choice how we approach it and how we respond to it and so i'm, I'm grateful for he concludes by saying how grateful he is um and uh, I know they're going to start playing in a moment and want to wrap up. Tangela, did you overhear that he uh, talked about yes. AJ? That was awesome. That's And that's what we love, right? We love introducing all of these new, amazing practitioners to the community, right? Yeah, that's amazing. They are amazing. And I'm so happy that Omashar was, you know, had such a, had, you know, was so impacted by them. Incredible. Of all the of all the guests, we've had hundreds of guests. Thomas and AJ who jumped into his head. So that's pretty beautiful. Beautiful. Well, what I'm going to do, um, I want to acknowledge one other person, and that's uh, our wonderful friend Jerry Anderson, the Wild Monk of the Mystic Monastery. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do um, uh, really do a big feature with you, Jerry, on an upcoming show where we can talk more about what you're doing um, with the Mystic Monastery. So I see you there and I want to acknowledge that. But while Johanna is here, I'm going to play this, the proper video. So you get to hear her again, uh, but get to see this time some of the faces of our beloved Global Peace Tribers. So one more time, we're all now going to be singing the song uh, for the rest of the night, right? Here we go. <laughs> love, 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 love Love is everything Love is everything Love, 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 love Love, love, love Love, 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 love Love, love, love oh, 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 oh Nothing you can do that can't be done Nothing you can sing that can't be sung Nothing you can say but you can learn how to play the game 
It's easy. Do everything with love. Do everything with love. Do everything with love. Love. Love is everything. Nothing you can make that can't be made. Nothing you can save that can't be saved. Nothing you can do but you can learn how to be you in time. It's easy. Yeah. Do everything with love. Do everything with love. Do everything with love. Love, love is everything. 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 It's seeing all those beautiful beings, so many wonderful people, and the sadness that three of those faces are no longer with us. So it's just as a reminder that life is precious. Life is absolutely precious. Um, and each and every one of you are precious. Thank you, Tangila, Johanna, Larissa. And I'm going to go to Gallery View because most of all, thank you, Global Peace Drivers. Even those of you that are still with us, we still have about more than uh, two thirds of our audience from tonight are still with us. So thank you everybody. Whether you've got your camera on or not, we love you. Um, each and every one of you are so special. Uh, Adora, I wanna acknowledge you for always dancing. Adora's always dancing. And so she is awesome. Karen S who was with us from the very first show on. She's only missed one show in all these Saturday nights. Um, and everybody else, you know, all the people that have come to Roger and Bonnie who have come to both of our retreats. Um, each and every one of you is very, very special. Waterfall, who's taken such good care of Eleanor Joy. Um, Eleanor Joy was with us for the first half of the show and then her battery ran out. Um, and some of our newer friends like Ellie, uh, older friends like Andrew and Ayata, Frode, who comes to us from Norway, um, and, and so on and so forth. If I didn't mention your name, please do not take it personally. Big love to each and every one of you. Uh, Fantuzzi has started to sing. So what's going to happen is I'm going to switch to my personal laptop. Um, and uh, I'm going to play an Omashar video um, to kind of uh, take us until I can come down and um, we'll show you Fantuzzi. And the rest of tonight will be the Fantuzzi live stream concert. Next week on Wednesday night, we've got two wonderful women who are going to show us all about how to do lucid dreaming. Have you ever wanted to do lucid dreaming? We're going to learn how to do that on Wednesday night. Thursday night, special event, live stream with the Twin Ray. Attention, uh, be in the Bay Area. I'll see you. I, I'm planning to. Yep, I'm planning to be there. You know, cool. so right. hopefully I will be there in person together. <laughs> awesome. And then next Saturday night, we're coming live from the New Living Expo. Um, so that'll be kind of fun. And um, I'm sure we'll have Tangela pop in on that show as well. Again, Johanna, Louisa, Tangela, I love all of you. Love you, Thank you everybody. Love you so much. Um, Congratulations. Yeah. Happy yeah. New Year's. Oh, Happy thank birthday you. to we. <laughs> right? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and let's see. Oh, That's your next music here. video. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. It's just, you, know, just, you know, you don't need to credit me for it. It's like, you know. Anyway, thank you so much, Scott, for everything. Let's go you, walk out to Tuesday. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. And here to kind of transition us uh, from here to when you'll see me in a few minutes uh, downstairs to Fantuzzi. Here is beloved Omar Shar. No, 
another dawn, another day. Innocent child coming your way. I've been wondering about my life. Oh, yeah. Wondering about my state of mind. But then I heard. Not for yourself. How do you feel? And why do you cry, 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 cry? Should we do what? Sun is warming up my mind. Ocean breeze blows me away. And yet still, I've been wondering about my life. Oh yeah, wondering who will take my place. We're going down to Fantuzzi now. No? You are muted, my friend. Uh, well, let me figure this out. I need to find me on oh. here. So we're going to remove the spotlights. Mm. Um. Oh, I see what's happening. Remove spotlight. Remove spotlight. Here we go. This is where we're going to spotlight. And we're going to now. Okay, here we go. There's a party happening.
And I don't need to push the edge in that way. Thank you for pointing that out. No, there we go. There you go. Now, we're now you got it. Go point it out. No, hang on. Oh, I see what I did about it. There we go. <laughs> What I had a next place, I guess. I put the edge a little crazy. He said, It's time for you to break. put the end in new ways. I said, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, take a little longer. Pray a little star. Scott, do you have original sound on? I think it, it wasn't on us, so we couldn't hear it too well. But if you turn on original sound, we'll hear it. The video is muted, but everyone is partying. Is it not? You can be You You can You can make You with it. I'm going to say the word. I'm going to say the 
Okay. A little scar. That tells me my life. I'll be greater than what I tell from my life right now. Oh, that was, I thought it was, uh, uh, it happened in a lot of it was in the beginning, so let it be in the end. A world without it, my friend. A world without it, without it, without it. And such a jump on the line. I'll do it again. I jump on the line right now. I jump on the line. I jump on the line right now. Don't you have the ears to hear the rest of me? Oh, which lights are falling? The ones who have my ears to see, they got to sleep. Shall rising in the morning. Shalom. Stand up, my name, going. My friends, come on. Shalom. Stand up, my name, going. Pray for peace. Play for peace. Work and live and die for peace. It's worth it. And work and We were the Lord that you see is working. But it was in the beginning, it's now and forever shall be a world without end. Strong! Strong! We still can't hear it that well, Scott. It sounds like the original sound isn't on, even if you might have it on. Do you have it on? Scott, we're not hearing the concert at all. Yeah, I, I don't know why that is. Um, I, I keep unmuting it. Um, Do you have original sound on? Uh, hold on. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> you have original sound on? Um, let me, I'll go back down. I'll go back downstairs to the computer. I keep unmuting it down there and I'm not sure why it's, uh, it keeps muting. So check original. no, it's not the muting. It sounds like there's not original sound on. Uh, well, I'm, uh, my thing is showing that it's muted right now. I'm, I'm upstairs and it's showing that it's muted. So let me go down and try again. Muted. It wasn't game. muted. This it lady. was just garbled. Well, if you want to do some talking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he couldn't hear me. I can hear you. It's not muted, but it's garbled. He's a tiny weapon. It's a tool and an instrument for opening the way of the peaceful warrior. Amen. I should. I hope. My friends, you have the choice every time in your hands to choose peace or war. Choose peace. So that you and your children will live. So that you, please, 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 so that you and your children, 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 children. Shall we continue? Yes. Yes. All right. Well, we got a couple more. We got a couple more. Hey, everybody. You know what I'm noticing is it's just the internet connection down there, unfortunately, is not good. And that's why we're having all the problems that we're having. Um, um, so try and remember, everybody, to keep yourselves muted, Jay. Uh, we've been hearing you a little bit. Um, I'll try one more song. He's kind of wrapping up anyway, and it's been a long night. Um, you could try your, uh, Scott, you could try your phone logging in on your phone on zoom because it has better internet and better sound for these kinds of things sometimes just a thought you can just change your camera sorry i just heard overheard but you can yeah no that's a really your, good idea go down to your video setting and then just change the camera to your phone and then everything will go through there instead and then you can take your phone down and live stream it does that make sense? So you're master. Everybody, good idea. Master everybody is still... else has to mute, but Scott. Mute everybody but Scott. Um, yeah, but Johanna was helping me just then. So that was good, Lynn. Uh, I late what she was 
she gave a good suggestion. So I'm going to give it a go. Yeah, and if you have any questions on how to do that, I'm happy to jump back on and let you know. All right, well, here, I'm going to do it right now. So let me open up my Zoom on this. Um, let's see the best way to do this. But you know what's interesting is like even the camera, okay, there we go. I'm going to pin it so you can at least see what's happening. And let me try and get my Zoom started up here. Okay. Here's this. Recording right. in progress. So it's going to echo at first because you have both of them in the same room. Yes, if you mute, you know how that works. And then you just change, Scott, you need to change the camera to the phone view via going down to your camera settings on your computer, on the Zoom on the computer, the master host, camera settings. And then it should show up your phone camera as the view. Then everything will be routed through the camera instead. It should be the second right under at FaceTime HD camera. You got it. Except it's blurred for some reason. Uh, Scott, don't leave. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Just trying to help. Sometimes it really, really works. It's just... Yes. Yes, we've got pictures, Scott. You can walk with it and uh, you should have audio on the phone. So then you can unmute your camera on the phone and direct the camera towards the concert and we should be good. Thank you. Hopefully this helps. Sorry, everyone.
my son Khalil. Wisdom for an educator. Yeah, yeah, how y'all feeling? Put your hands up in the air one time. Yeah, educate, liberate, rhyme slayer. I'm a professor, educator, a rhyme slayer. My pop fit Tuesday, this is what we do. When the heart music always coming through. Get the pasta, bonito en la casa, ay que rico. Este momento tengo suave mi alma, 100%. I apologize for it not going so easily to watch the Fantasy concert. I know you've got like little snippets of it. Uh, he's wrapping up, so I'm going to wrap it up too. Um, thank you, everybody, for being with us. Um, and uh, I'm glad you at least got one good song in. Thank you, Johanna, for all that you do to make things happen. And I uh, hope to see you all on Wednesday night. Um, we're going to learn all about lucid dreaming. Thursday night, special event with the Twin Ray. You do um, make sure you open up the email that I sent out that has that the Zoom room link for that. And then Saturday night. And I'm going to put the wild monk and his buddy on. Uh, Jerry, we, we're kind of coming in and out because of, uh, but we are going to do, uh, we're going to do something special for Jerry in the next few weeks. So we love you, Jerry and your buddy. There he is. And um, I'm going to go to gallery view one last time, everybody. It's been quite a night. It's been an amazing four years, and I look forward to four more years with all of you. Take care, everybody. Good night, and God bless.